In 11 years in Baltimore, Dennison Cabral has won three MISL titles. His team has been up and down this year, but they look like they're peaking. They're coming at you right at the right time with the playoffs just around the corner. And they've got league MVP Adolfo Neto back from injury. Meanwhile, Don D'Ambra and the Kicks, well, they're just scrapping for their postseason lives. It's the MISL's I-95 rivalry, and it's next on Fox Soccer Channel. From First Mariner Arena in downtown Baltimore, Maryland, it's the MISL Game of the Week on Fox Soccer Channel as the Baltimore Blast hosts the Philadelphia Kicks. We're so glad you're with us tonight. Hi, everybody. I'm Ken Tomash along with Gary Stein. We're glad you're with us tonight for the MISL Game of the Week. What a rivalry we have tonight, Gary. These two teams have gone at it for the last 12 years. It's always exciting to watch. You know what? 90 miles separates these two teams, and they win championships all the time. Phillies won two, including last year. The Blast have won three out of the last five years. They're going in opposite directions right now, but but this rivalry is hotter than ever. Now, Baltimore's in the exact same position they were after 23 games a year ago, and the last thing they want to see is a repeat of last year's Foldo job at the end of the season. They got to win tonight. With one major difference, though, they're healthy this year. They've got Adato Neto in the lineup. Salenza is in the lineup as well. Those two were not last year, and it's a big difference for the Baltimore Blast. Speaking of difference makers, how about Michelle Millwood? What a difference does this guy make? Uh, he's huge. I mean, you just take a look at him. 6'2", 194 pounds, and he's got long strides. He creates space between himself and the defense the booming left foot, fifth in the league in scoring at 64 points on the season. He is definitely a difference maker for the Blast. MVP of the championship series two years ago, the last time the Blast won it. But he's not the only uh, cog in this offense because we mentioned Adonio Neto, former league MVP, back from a rash of injuries. Game changer when he's healthy, and he's healthy right now for the Blast. 5'10", 178, so not much size, but hey, he plays offense and defense, was the league's MVP a couple of years ago. 36 goals, 22 assists then. Missed the first 11 games this year, but he He's back and healthy for the Blast. And he will be a handful tonight. Don't let his small size uh, deceive you. He is a guy who can really play this game. Now, for the kicks, we talked about it. They've got the fewest games remaining in the league. They need to win almost every one of them if they're going to get into the postseason part. Well, if they lose tonight, there'll be four losses behind Monterey and the New Jersey Ironman, and that's going to be about it for them. They're the second worst road team in the league. The Blast are the best home team in the league, so it should be an interesting match. Key players for the kicks. It starts with the head man, Don D'Ambra, not just the player, not just the coach, he's both, and he's good at both. Hasn't slowed down at the age of 35, and he is Mr. Kicks, one of only two players in franchise history to be here for all 12 years. 51 points, tied for eighth in the year, a coach, a player, a leader, the inspiration for Philadelphia. Well, the Kicks are definitely going to take their keys from Don D'Ambra, but he is not the only guy they have. They have some guys who that can make things very interesting. Well, when healthy, John Barry Newsom is probably the best target man in the league. Big size, 6'1", 205, soccer standard that's pretty big. The former Bermuda Male Athlete of the Year, the former MISL Rookie of the Year, and he gives the blast fits all the time. And he knows all about indoor soccer. His dad, John Newsom, played for the MISL's first dynasty, the New York Arrows. He is going to be a handful tonight for the Philadelphia Kicks as the, and the Baltimore Blast as they renew the I-95 rivalry right here on Fox Soccer Channel. It's the MISL Game of the Week. Gary and I are coming right back with the lineups and the kickoff. It's the Kicks against the Blast. Stick around. It's all coming your way from First Mariner Arena right after this timeout. First Mariner Arena in Baltimore is the scene. The Philadelphia Kicks and the Baltimore Blast, the opposition tonight in the MISL Game of the Week. You're looking at First Mariner Arena, which has a ton of folks in it tonight to watch one of the really great rivalries in indoor soccer. Ken Tomash and Gary Stein with you, and that red ball is about to be kicked off by Don D'Amber, the player coach of the Philadelphia Kicks, and he'll send it back to Pat Morris. And now here's Casey Barton, who's just back into the Philadelphia team this week, just re-signed. He gives them a good veteran presence at the back. Slip head by D'Ambra, scooped up by Baltimore keeper Sagu. You know, uh, Ken, it's an interesting matchup with the goalkeepers tonight, Peter Pappas and Sagu for the blast. Pappas, who you can count how many games he missed in his entire indoor career until this year, was dinged in the head a couple times earlier. Seven games missed this year for Peter with a dual situation in goal. Sagu gets most of the starts, but Dave Kern has accounted himself very well, four and one on the year, resting Sagu at key times during the season. Sagu, who has the ball at his feet right now, the Brazilian, uh, is leading the league in points against average once again after leading it last year. Here's Carlos Garcia pushing it down here into the corner. Giuliano Salenza holding the ball with Pat Morris, the captain of the kicks on him. He'll play it back out to Billy Nelson. And no, do not adjust your set. The 
blast are not wearing their traditional reds. Those are Army camouflage jerseys they're wearing. We'll talk more about that in a minute as Pete Pappas makes his first save of what will be, no doubt, many tonight. Yeah, and he made it on Michelle Millwood, who we talked about in the open, usually likes to go with the left, but on this particular case, went from left to right and used the right foot. Pappas with the big save. Philadelphia in white, and you say, they always say, yeah, you and what Army? Tonight, the uh, Blast are wearing uh, U.S. Army themed jerseys that they're going to auction off for charity after the game. So if you're used to seeing the Blast in red, just get used to them in camouflage tonight. They'll try not to blend in. They're going to try to make a statement tonight as Salenza sends a missile way up into the stage here behind Peter Pappas. Yeah, I've seen the Blast uh, play in many different uniforms this year. Tonight, of course, they're in the khaki. They wore their retro jerseys the other night when it was Blast Hall of Fame night here at First Marin Arena. Here you see Millwood with the right foot. Again, he usually likes to go left, but that time got open top of the box. And uh, Billy uh, Nelson taking a fall inside the uh, box there for the Blast. John Barry Newsom with his first touch is with his head, but Philadelphia has to watch as it gets knocked back again to Segu. They will run a lot through Segu. He's very comfortable with the ball at his feet. He's almost like a sixth attacker. He won't venture out all the way to midfield, but he is very confident to start the attack with the ball at his feet. Here is Newsom now. Newsom he's always a handful for the oh, Blast. Gosh, he's just a terrific player when he's healthy. You know, Philly's beaten uh, the Blast only once out of three times this year, but that one was in Philadelphia. It was the first ever shutout suffered by the Blast. Four to nothing was the score in that game. Pete Pappas was just unbelievable. His fourth career shutout, something you don't see very often in the indoor game. And here's Sagu starting the attack with his hand that time rather than his feet. It's Ray Martinez. Blast have made a habit of quick starts. They scored a goal just five seconds into their game against Chicago two games ago. And then Neto scored a big goal against Detroit in the first couple of minutes. Philly doing a good job right now, though, of kind of dictating the pace in this game. Here's Ray Martinez playing it back to P.J. Wakefield, the Blast captain. And all the way back to Robbie Aristodemo, the Canadian international on the center line. Now Ryan Pierce. Pierce, a good-looking rookie, has not scored. He's only taken five or six shots, but he's been like a stone wall on defense for the Blast. Good movement by Baltimore on and off the ball. They're getting a lot of movement, a lot of target options. And what do you know? They find the guy in white, John Barry Newsom. Yeah, and that's what you have to do with Neto. You know, Neto had the ball in the midfield, 15 for the blast, and when he gets it, you got to try to collapse on him. Philly did a good job devoting two players that time, and it worked as the kicks get the turnover in that situation. Less than four minutes into this game, no score between the Philadelphia kicks and the Baltimore blast. Is that one is headed over the glass and into the seats? It'll be a kick in here. You know, there's a look at Neto, and when you talk about some of the game changers in Lee, clearly Greg Howes is one of them, Dino Dolevsky, Hanoni Martinez. You know, Neto doesn't get the accolades like some of those guys do, and maybe because it's it's because he's been hurt for the last couple of years. But when he's on the field, the Blast is an entirely different team. He's been very unlucky. It's good to see him back. He's fought through the injuries. Aaron Susi now, speaking of injuries, is down in the corner for Philadelphia. And that is one thing that Philadelphia cannot afford, is to have one of their better offensive threats and a longtime veteran of this league go down and Dennison Cabral down for the blast as well yeah but he always pops back up <laughs> well except that one year, we, year yeah when they had lost him and Garcia in the same game same game against the Milwaukee Wave blast lost that game three to one if I'm not mistaken and uh, Dennison tore the ACL in one knee came back and tore the ACL in the other knee basically missed two consecutive years but he's come back and he's a hallmark a stalwart for the blast and Aaron Susi what a great pickup he's been for the Philadelphia kicks went to the championship game a couple years ago as a member of the Cleveland crunch when they lost to Milwaukee in a very exciting championship series in fact this is his seventh pro team Aaron Susi gets around gets around here is Garcia in the corner draws the double out to Pierce here on the near side finds Cabral Sonny Namaski on him Shot blocked by Namaski. So Baltimore will try again. Stepping in and winning that one is Nigel Marples, who played collegiately here at Towson University. The spring Namaski on the far side is going to go 1v1 with Salenza to slide it to Donatelli. He's not afraid to take a shot. He leads the team in shots, but before he can do it, Carlos Garcia picks his pocket. You know, you know, that's one of the hallmarks right now of the Blast. The Blast won their first six games of the year, and they lost seven of eight. They kind of lost their defensive mojo. Danny Kelly, their head coach, talked about getting five players behind the ball. And just there at the yellow line, you saw it. 
players starting to come back on defense. And here, here you take a look at the standings. Milwaukee and Detroit have separated themselves from the blast by a couple of games. Baltimore right now in pretty good position in third. They destroyed Chicago last week at home, 19-9. Monterey and New Jersey in a dogfight. But again, Philadelphia at seven. If they lose tonight, their position becomes very tenuous uh, when it comes to making the playoffs in 2008. Because last year, 15 wins did not get you in. No, the last, know that only too well. Yeah, absolutely. 15 and nine after 24 games, and then 0 and six their last six, and then before you know it, out of the playoffs. Jonathan Steele can't get through his man looking land there. Ball knocked into the seat. It has been feast or famine for the Blast. They've either won the title or finished out of the playoffs for the last five well, years. Well, and Johnny Steele was a big reason why the Blast won its last title. In fact, Johnny Steele made the big steal, no pun intended, against Milwaukee to set up Michelle Millwood for the golden goal, which got the Blast to the final against St. Louis. He's a speedy, speedy player. Now here's Michael Todd. Turns toward the goal. Great looking rookie who scored two goals against Philadelphia in the season opener. D'Ambra, ever so calmly, perhaps too much, puts it into the seats over there where there's no glass. Now, this is a big turnaround as Danny Kelly looks on for the blast. It's what they call a legal procedure, which means the blast now will have a restart opportunity at the top of the box. Blast have not been particularly proficient on set pieces this year, but they're in good position here for Danny Kelly. There you see Danny Kelly standing out among those camouflage jerseys that'll be auctioned off after the game. The U.S. Army, a big sponsor here. This is a big military town here in Baltimore. Yep, about 35 miles north of D.C. Salenza leaves it. Millwood shot blocks. Pappas draws a beat on it and grabs it at the edge of his area. Now he will fire one long. Steal. Yeah, Peter, one of the best distributors in the game, not only can do it with his feet, but has a live arm. And when you talk about goalkeepers in the league, I mean, clearly Victor Noguera back in the old MISL days was number one. I don't know that there's a better goalkeeper in the MISL today than Peter Pappas. You know, Keith Tozer agrees with you. I was talking to him not long ago. He said of that era, Nagira, far and away number one. His era lasted forever. I mean, he started in the Paleozoic era, to be honest. And uh, Peter Pappas, the best of his era. Now it's Robbie Aristodemo, a pretty fair country player himself. That ball goes off Kelly Mock, the referee, and the Blast get it back. Ray Martinez can't get that one through Tom Myers. And Myers will clear it. Steals fast, but he's not fast enough to get on the end of that one. Yeah, Blast very active in the corners tonight as they like to get off to a good start, but Philly doing a good job staying with them man to man in the corners. Still looking for our first goal of the night. Will it come from the Blast? It's Ryan Pierce. Again, they try Neto in the corner. Neto likes the ball here. He likes to look across the field. There it is. Oh, Steps up Pierce for the goal, just like you said. Boy, he sees the field, flicked it there, and a nice finish by the rookie Pierce. And that is the first ever goal for Ryan Pierce in his MISL indoor soccer career. But it couldn't, and it couldn't have happened to a nicer guy, let me tell you. But it wouldn't have happened unless Neto set him up and found him in the box. Only his sixth shot of the year, you mentioned. That one goes in, he'll remember that one. Let's take a look at it so he can remember. And there's, there's the finish and a beautiful cross by Neto to find Pierce not only open but in stride and allowed him to use the back of the foot and find, it, uh, find the net past the keeper. And Ryan Pierce celebrating his first points ever. That's Neto's 11th assist in just 13 games. Yeah, he's back. Now, we'll see what Philadelphia does. A bicycle kick by Newsom that goes high. Oh, that would have been quite the answer had that been able to go. How athletic of a play. I mean, that's he's one of the biggest guys in the league at 205. How athletic to get up and smack that towards the board. Yeah, you don't see a lot of bikes in this league because the landing is not always the best. Yeah, like landing on cement with a carpet, but you're right. Still, the great ones don't mind, right? Here's Millwood all alone near the yellow line. Now he draws a crowd. Trying to flick it here to Cabral. Back to Millwood. On Wendell Regis, another former Blast player. Now here's Donatelli. He's tracked down by Billy Nelson. Nelson, one of the league's unheralded defenders. He'll always draw the toughest matchup. No matter who the opponent is, you'll see him matched up with John Barry Newsom here a lot tonight. Uh, he's got averaging better than one and a half blocks per game for his MISL career. And he's only missed seven games in his career, and he's been here a while. 
Very durable. Another former Rookie of the Year was Billy Nelson. In fact, there are three of them playing tonight. You've got Nelson, you've got Wakefield, who run along in the back for the blast, and of course, John Barry Newsom for Philadelphia. Now it's Sagu. Up to Salenza, and Salenza gets fouled against the boards and takes the quick restart. Nice Michael idea. Todd. Pappas and Todd collided at the edge of the area. Now they spring steel. Now watch the speedster. Cuts back inside. Left footed shot blocked by Pierce. Again, though, four guys behind the ball there. And, you know, all the speed in the world, that's great for Johnny Steele. But when you go one on four, and the Blast have really committed themselves to defense. Susie, who's back in the game after being shaken up in that corner, is headed away from him, though. Here comes Baltimore. Advantage play. Here's Lucio. Lucio Gonzaga has been a great addition for the Blast. Gives him another three-point threat, and he's got some wheels in the midfield. That shot is blocked, and it'll go over the official wall here. We've got an official timeout on the floor. We're just getting started, though, on the major indoor soccer league game of the week. With 6.41 to play in the first quarter at First Mariner Arena in Baltimore, the hometown blast lead the Philadelphia kicks 2-0. Gary and I will be right back. So don't you go away. This is Fox Soccer Channel's MISL Game of the Week. Withdraw, please. Thank you wouldn't you. expect your bank teller to take back some of your money when you make a withdrawal. So why do you let the ATM take it when you need some cash? Open a checking account today at First Mariner Bank and you'll never have to pay to use the ATM. For no fee access at more than 10,000 ATMs nationwide, look for the Money Pass logo. It's your money. You shouldn't have to pay a fee to get it. Switch to First Mariner Bank. We built this bank for you. Fall of Liberty, rated T for team. FSC presents the LA Galaxy Tour of Asia. David Beckham leads his squad as they look to showcase their skills across the Asian continent. March 9th, destination Hong Kong, China, exclusively on FSC. Back in Baltimore where the place is rocking because the blast is up 2-0 and they've got a kick in deep in the corner looking to add to that lead. Brought in reinforcements for tonight's game. Those jerseys are going to be auctioned off to benefit families who have wounded service men and women overseas. And of course, our thoughts go out to all of our men and women serving our country proudly and bravely. And there's a second goal by Baltimore off the set piece. It's Mike Looking Land with a goal. And you know, that's an area where the Blast need to improve, and they did right there. Robbie Aristodemo triggered it in right inside the box, and the Blast finished to go up 4 0. Coming into the game, the Blast were minus five in this category, but Looking Land, one of the better young defenders in the league, deposits it into the back of the net, coming wide open inside the box. And the Blast, when they start quick, they often win the game, and they're on their way to do that here. Looking Land's ninth goal of the year comes off the set piece. Aristodemo gets the assist. And now Philadelphia needs to answer. There's Namaski battling Looking Land, the goal scorer, who springs it out there to Aristodemo, who was the assist man on that goal. Blast doing a great job tonight of reversing fields. When there's too much traffic on one side of the field, the quick pass to the other side creates space. And they, and they just saw it right there for the blast. Oh, Pappas had to flick that one over the defender, and it gets sent back the other way. Pappas will have to clear it again. Blast buzzing around, though, forcing Philadelphia into some dangerous play. You know, it's interesting about looking, Len, as you get older in the game, you get more mature. Here's Neto. Stoned by Pappas. The rebound goes high. Oh, what a re... Oh, what a rebound shot by Cabral that almost went. The Blast just buzzing around right now and just inflicting their will upon Philadelphia. Well, Neto thinks he should have had a goal in that sequence. Cabral probably thinks he should have had one as well. And, and you got to give Craig, uh, credit to Peter Pappas coming out and reading that play after the turnover, coming out corner top of the box and denying Neto the goal. Now it's Millwood with Drew Kopp on him, who's on for his first shift in a month. He's been out with a knee injury. 
Yeah, that's a big injury for Philadelphia, one of the better defenders in the league, and a big part in their success last year. Here's Nelson. He finds Salenzo, can't find the handle. Steele comes in, and steal that one away for Philadelphia. He'll chip it out to Kopp. Kopp will toe poke it, but there's nobody there. Tom Myers can't run onto it, and Nelson will shepherd it back to his goalkeeper, Sagu, who finds a wide open Carlos Garcia. He's got tons of real estate. Yeah, Blast taking advantage of the line change for Philadelphia. Garcia comes wide open. Salenza now. Williams on him. Chris Williams. They were calling for a handball, but the call was not made. Yeah, Salenza looked over to Kelly Mock and said, hey, what about it? So the Blast don't get that one. But right now, though, the Blast, especially feeding off that uh, first goal and now second goal, are just totally taking the game to Philadelphia. Philadelphia couldn't get it out of its own end, as Danny Kelly looks on, for about a minute and a half. It was the Blast buzzing around and creating turnovers. And again, the defense helping to create their offense, as they have over the last 10 games. Blast have won eight of their last 10. Philadelphia has won only four of their last 10. Newsom, Segu comes out, leaps over the head of Newsom, but can't control the ball. That's, that's just a great read by Segu, knowing the explosiveness of John Barry Newsom. Here he comes again. Newsom with a try for three, that's blocked. Again, if you're new to the indoor game, the 45-foot arc, any shot from on or beyond that arc is worth three points, while all other goals are worth two. The Blast have two of them, so they're up 4 nothing. And here's the matchup, John Barry Newsom, this time against P.J. Wakefield. Push it back out to Angel Revillo. Uh, he'll go off, and Morris finds Casey Barton. Just acquired, Casey Barton was a key member for Philadelphia last year on their back line as they went all the way and won the MISL championship against Detroit. Now Barton will try to trigger that long to Namoski, but he overran it. Nice so, playing by the Blast in the midfield. Philadelphia's had possession here for a little while, which is nice, but they've got to do something with it. Philly really misses the big foot of Hanoni Martinez. He had uh, eight power play goals last year. In fact, they only have eight as a team this year. And you just never know with Hanoni. I mean, he could be taking that ball from anywhere, coast to coast. And between him and Dino Dolevsky, who are all, both of them are playing for, for Monterey this year, Philadelphia has lost a lot of firepower. Here is Susie. Talk about big feet, Sean Boney, a big loss as well. There's a big shot by Namoski and saved by Segu. Yeah, Boney now playing in Orlando has just come on for them, and they're starting to play a little better too. I mean, you take three offensive stars like that out of any team, and it's going to hurt. Philly's struggling right now. They're eighth out of nine teams in the league, averaging just a shade over 10 points per game. Yeah, where are the goals going to come from? They've been coming from Don D'Ambra, but he needs some help. Yeah, it's kind of like basketball. If you got one or two guys on the court that can shoot, all right, that's great. But if you have three, all of a sudden you're going to make people pay attention. Philly, Philly just doesn't have it right now. Lucio squirted through a bunch Neto. And Pat Morris was all up in that camouflage jersey. Somebody should tell Pat, you got a bid on those. You can't just take it right off his back. Last pressuring here in the Philadelphia zone. Again, making Philly work to get it past midfield. Yeah. And, they, and they may not. Yeah, it didn't happen. Steele now will launch it long. D'Ambra is there, slip hit. Sagu grabs it. He had it all the way. Wow, wide open, Lucio. Lucio with a try from three, deflected off Rendell Regis. Regis was a key member of the Blast yep. championship teams. He's been around forever. Played in Harrisburg back in the old NPSL. Cabral brings that one down. Effortlessly finds Neto. Oh, Aristodemo actually kind of broke up that pass himself, but the Blast still have it. Flick to the top of the arc. Neto again. And again, they're just nipping at his heels every time he gets the ball. And Neto's patient. I mean, he'll survey the field if he can take a look at the goal. If he can, he'll move it back to midfield and keep possession. Melwood was calling for that ball from Aristodemo, but Philly broke it up. 50-50 ball, one by D'Amber, it looks like, and it'll bounce into the Area, so that one went off. Billy Nelson will be a kick in for Philly right in front of the bench. As you look at Tony Donatelli, who had a great year last year as a rookie for Philly, you know, Philly really hasn't had a great shot on goal yet. They've had a couple of headers, Newsom and D'Ambra to speak of, but other than that, they've not put a lot of pressure on Segu. Meanwhile, though, the Blast have peppered Peter Pappas. So you say. <laughs> Easy for you to say. No, look at the footwork by the big fella. Here's a chance. 
Pop on the run. Flicks it to Revio. He'll shoot it off the post. D'Ambro will lay it back into the middle. Revio again, and he's off the target to the other side. Well, two good chances for Philly. You got to finish, and they couldn't on the first one. Revio hit the far post. That's probably their best chance of the night. It's a cruel game, whether indoor or outdoor. Game of inches. Here's Newsom. Nice defense by Garcia to deny Revio inside the box and allow Segu to make that play. Getting to the end of the first quarter. Philly now coming with a little pressure, but just not enough. Segu will have time. Plenty of time. And Pat Morris had time to read that. Oh, nice idea. Happens. Only a few seconds left. I don't think Philly can get anything done. And the horn sounds to end the first quarter before Tony Donatelli can get on the end of that one and do anything with it for Philadelphia. So a great first quarter. One quarter in the books at First Marin Arena in Baltimore. The blast leads the Philadelphia kicks for nothing. Stick around on the other side of this break. Darren and I will be back with second quarter action. If you like the first, you'll love the second. There's more of the same. You're watching the Major Indoor Soccer League Game of the Week exclusively on Fox Soccer Channel. The Blast leads the kicks for nothing. Fast and frenetic action. More coming your way after this. Stick around. Introducing Way to Save from Wachovia. Every time you make a Wachovia Visa check card purchase or pay a bill online, a beautiful thing happens. One dollar is transferred from your free checking to a high interest savings account. Plus, Wachovia will pay you up to $300 just for saving. And that sure beats saving change. Are you with Wachovia? Of all the numbers you encounter, along your journey to wherever you're going, you'll find there's one number you can always count on for a great night's rest. Super 8, now with free high-speed internet, free breakfast, and more. Super 8, see you along the way. BoxSoccer.com is the online home of the Barclays Premier League in the U.S. Watch free highlights all week long of every game, from recaps with all the goals and saves to weekend roundups and golden moments. BoxSoccer.com is where the English game lives online. Introducing the Arrow Garden. Now you can experience the magic of growing fresh herbs, cherry tomatoes, salad greens, chili peppers, and more right on your kitchen counter all year round. With no dirt, no weeds, no pesticides, no work, no worries. No more wilted lettuce or expensive herbs to throw away. Grow hundreds of dollars of fresh homegrown herbs and vegetables year after year. Nothing is safer, fresher, or healthier than food you've grown yourself. Harvest in just weeks and keep enjoying fresh, delicious food for up to six months. It's foolproof and backed by our 100% success guarantee. We tested lettuce grown in the Arrow Garden versus lettuce grown in dirt. The difference is amazing. Imagine growing a garden like this on your kitchen counter. All that growth in just 36 days and you'll keep harvesting for months. Call right now for your free DVD and learn how you can grow hundreds of dollars of garden fresh herbs, vegetables, and strawberries right in your own kitchen all year long. Call 1-800-720-5812. That's 1-800-720-5812. Second quarter about to begin. First Mariner Arena in Baltimore, the scene of the Major Indoor Soccer League Game of the Week here on Fox Soccer Channel. Ken Tomash and Gary Stein with you. For the I-95 rivalry, there you see the Philadelphia Kicks in white. Don D'Amber right there in the middle, the player coach, and Peter Pappas, he was busy in that first quarter here. A blaster nine and two when they lead after one quarter of play, and you're right, Peter Pappas was in the crosshairs of the blast. Uh, the blast finished twice inside the box and take a 4 nothing lead. Watch for the blast here on the kickoff. You know how a lot of teams like to kick it back towards the midfield as we look at the uh, first quarter stats. And the big one that jumps out at you, Ken, is the shots. 11-4 blast all over Peter Pappas. Yep, and he stood tall there, but he was left in bad positions. He didn't really have a chance on either of those two goals. Now, to finish the thought, watch what the blast do here on the kickoff. They don't kick it back. They go right towards the goal and try to create an opportunity. It worked against Chicago the other night as well as Detroit, but Philadelphia figures it out this time. So now they turned around and the kicks will be attacking from our right to our left. A three-pointer attempt from the yellow line. 
by Tom Myers went too high. So Philly contend in the first quarter to try to work inside the box, but the glass wouldn't let him in there. So Tom Myers right off the bat with a three-point try from the yellow line to try to create something for Philadelphia. Also tonight, Detroit looking to solidify uh, their second place standing and maybe move ahead of Milwaukee. Lead Orlando after one. 2-0. Glass saw Detroit a couple of weeks ago. Glass haven't played in 12, 12 days, but uh, Detroit destroyed them up there. Uh, got out to an early lead to the Glass 2-0, but they couldn't stay with the ignition. Detroit beat them by 11. Steal by Neto. It's a two-on-one. He's got Pierce as an option right. Gets it over to him a little behind him. If he could have put it for him to run onto it, it would have been danger time. Uh, they put it into the mixer and a foul call there. Tell you what, nice spacing by Philadelphia there. They, they stayed with their men and forced Neto to do something with the ball. And again, it was a tough angle for Neto to find Ryan Pierce, but credit Philadelphia's defense. I mean, look at Neto. Nine goals, 10 assists. He's only been playing, what, 12 games now for the Blast. They're a completely different team when he's out there. Here's Pat Morris. Knock long. They look for Newsom. Gets it back. Very confident with the ball on the overlap to Revillo. He'll send it off the boards, and Segu is there. Segu's having a big year. He leads the league in points against. The record's right around 500, but the Blast didn't score for him many times during the year. In fact, they lost a 4 0 game to Philadelphia, but he's turned out to be one of the better keepers in the league. Here's Regis now. Sends it through. It's Donatelli in a crowd. He must feel like he's getting recruited there. He's in the three guys in camouflage shirts. You know, I like the way Philly's playing here in the second quarter with a little bit more pace. They're trying to force the action. Morris with it now. He'll flick it back off the shelf and out of play. Yeah, it's a new, uh, new rule in the, in the MISL this year. We're right in the middle by where the players' benches are, in the middle part of the stadium. Uh, the fans, there is no glass there. And it's, uh, it's a great experience for the fans who actually can almost reach out and touch the players. But you get a lot more balls that go over the boards and out of bounds. Yeah, but please don't reach over and touch the players. <laughs> I don't like it. Patton's with a save at the edge of the area. Yeah, and almost right uh, outside the edge. Oh, Susie. His ACL made a little whimpering noise right there on that play. There's Garcia now going 1v1 on the Mosky. Feeds it through. Millwood was there, but so is Pappas. Nice idea for Carlos Garcia, who's played well for the Blast this season. Has a career high in points, but a good read there by Pappas. Pappas now comes out. Yeah, I see Peter not seeing anything downfield. Relies on Pat Morris to get it up. D'Amber lays it off. Shot. Saved by Sagu. You know, that's not Casey Barton's game out there. He doesn't have the big thundering foot from outside. Casey just picked up by Philly for the last seven games of the year. But again, Philly trying to make something happen on the perimeter. Nice footwork by Cabral to spin through there. Oh, a nice idea by Michael Todd. How's that not a foul inside the box? Wow, Kelly Mock right there, and he's going to hear it from Tennyson Cabral, who sprints down to the field, but kept looking over his left shoulder, and he's still looking back at Mock. And look how quickly Sagu distributes to midfield as the Blast want to push the pace. Oh. Shot goes wide. Back post for Michael Todd just wide. Donatelli clears. Here's Newsom hit from behind by Wakefield, but stands his ground. Yeah, Blast uh, have P.J. Wakefield on him right now, like plaster. Doesn't matter where John Barry Newsom is on the field. He could be in your offensive end. He could be in his offensive end. You got to stick right with him and do not allow him to turn and face the goalkeeper. Newsom in the corner. Wakefield all over him. Tries again with the bike, and again, it's over into the setup for the post-game concert. Oh, He's yeah. just going to keep shooting, though. Well, and you know what? Sometimes he doesn't have to turn to face the goalkeeper on the bicycle kick, as we've seen now twice in the first, what, about 20 minutes of the game. Just what an athletic player he is at that size. Sagu now. They one touch it here to Looking Land, who has a goal tonight. He's got wide open spaces across the yellow line. Salenza now with a shot. Pappas goes low to get it. Right through the legs of Neto, who tried to create a screen inside. Susi will go back to him now. 10.37 to go, first half, 4-0 blast. 
Last contesting every ball in the midfield. You just saw Carlos Garcia try to block that uh, distribution from Revilla. Nice miss, Danny. Now D'Ambra had that one go sharply off his foot oh, and out of play. Yeah, he's frustrated. Donatelli tried to find him, but the pass to D'Ambra from Donatelli had a little bit too much pace. Here's Newsom. Yeah, here's the replay and watch. You know, Newsom's so athletic. I mentioned earlier you don't want to have him turn and face the keeper, but it doesn't matter because sometimes he'll do that. And, uh, you know, those are those are difficult chances, but I've seen them convert. And Wakefield saw it up close and personal. Slammed off the far boards. Philly controls. D'Ambra. Nice ball. To Steele. Nelson on him, but Steele has nobody. Cop will play it here to Morris. Johnny Steele and Danny Kelly had a falling out here in Baltimore, which led to his dismissal from the team. But he's kind of regenerated his career in Philadelphia. Millwood loses it there, but then alertly gets it back and sends it over to Nelson. Always trying to find the open man. That's one of the mantras for the blast. Now Sagu comes up. We want somebody to show for him. Punch it to the yellow line, and they're going to look. And yes, that is a two-line pass by the keeper. A field player can't play the ball over all three lines, but a goalkeeper can't play it other than by hand over two. And Sagu knocked it over two lines, so it's going to come back 50 feet away from his goal on the yellow line for a free kick. Yeah, it's a turnover on Segu. Garcia tried to make the play at the yellow line, realizing that if he didn't, it would be a dangerous position for the blast. He just couldn't connect on the pass. And so now Philly will be set up at the red spot at the yellow line, a restart opportunity here for the kicks. Baltimore has allowed 10 restart goals, tied for the most in the league. So they are vulnerable. Seems Denver. like all of them come against Milwaukee, too. And they just missed. Well, everybody has fallen victim to that. They're so good on set pieces. That one comes off the shelf. Steele with a big left foot a moment ago for Philly, just wide. That time he uses the chest to redirect it to Namoski. And now Steele will get it back. D'Amber calling for the ball at the yellow line, but Steele noted that he was covered by Billy Nelson. Steele at one time was the youngest player in the league. When he was signed, a Kansas City, right? signed a contract, he played at the age of 18 years old. Too far for Donatelli, and Segu is there. He looks ever so confident tonight. Yeah, he's looked good all season for the Blast. Signed with the Dallas uh, sidekicks uh, a few years ago. Came to the Blast in the dispersal draft. At a time when the Blast needed him, because Scott Heilman had retired and Brett Phillips had gone to St. Louis. And Segu was exactly what the Blast needed at that time. Aristodemo to Wakefield. Net oh, up, flips it back nicely to Wakefield. Inside the three-point line, sets up Cabral for the easy deuce. Boy, it doesn't get drawn up much better than that. It all starts with a Dotto Neto for the blast, and many times it finishes with Denison Cabral. The only difference here is Wakefield got in the middle of it, but you may never see a prettier setup by both Neto and Wakefield and the excellent finish by Cabral. And that's blast soccer right there as they share it. You'll see the end of it here. Wakefield with the left. Cabral finds him in stride. The keeper had committed. There's nothing Peter Pappas can do about that. And right now, the Blasts are just all over in Philadelphia. But you're right. Neto's little flick in the midfield is what really sprung Wakefield, who made a nice move on the give and go. And Cabral finishes. You know, it's not all flash and dash in the world of sports. Sometimes it's just some moxie and patience, and that's exactly what you saw with Neto there. He didn't take on his man. He didn't do anything spectacular. All he did was find the open man, and that's what led to the goal. 22nd goal of the year for Cabral. Wakefield with his 13th assist, and it's 6-0 Baltimore. Denison Cabral means so much to the city of Baltimore, not only with playing soccer on the field, but the work he does off the field. We'll talk to David Bascom, the assistant coach, uh, about some of his work during halftime. But Cabral coaches St. Mary's, which is a local high school team here in the area, and he's just done so much for the city. Millwood is blocked by Regis there, former teammates. Scrum for it in the corner. Here's Tom Myers on the move. Yeah, showing some speed, but again, the blast staying right with him. Susie finds Nelson. the open man, Donatelli. Will he have a go from range? No, he finds Susie. He's got a score, he can't. Save of the game for Sagu, who read Susie right off the bat. Philly, though, buzzing around. They're starting to pressure. And now the blast with a turnover from inside the arc. Yeah, it looks like they're going to get a restart from the top of the arc, but they're going to get it after this timeout. 
The action on the first Marin Arena turf is heating up. When we come back, we're going to have 722 left in the first half of play with the Baltimore Blast leading the Philadelphia Kicks by a score of 6-0. Don't go away. This is the MISL Game of the Week on Fox Soccer Channel. Gary and I will be right back with more stuff. Did you know that smiling has been proven to reduce stress? It can also boost your immune system and lower your blood pressure. If that's not enough, smiling releases endorphins which make you feel better. Well, at Care First Blue Cross Blue Shield, we give you even more reasons to smile. More choices, more experience, and more doctors. So smile. It's good for you. Care First Blue Cross Blue Shield. More to feel good about. Fall of Liberty, rated T for teen. With a blast, lead the kicks. Here in the second quarter, 6-0, but Philly with a good chance here. A restart from the top of the arc, 27 and a half feet away from Segu's goal. He's got a three-man wall. Newsom runs off it. Donatelli measures it, plays it softly. Shot by Morris, and again, it's saved by Segu. Yeah, read by the keeper, and look, off to the races. Salenza at the other end. Pappas, I thought he got all ball, but no, they're going to send Pappas off and probably give him a shootout. He was the last man back. I thought he got ball, but Giuliano Salenza did go tumbling, so we'll see the replay. Well, sometimes it's better to be lucky than good. Not only was Segu's save a great save for the keeper and the blast, but with such force that shot was shot, it uh, set up Salenza on the other end. Let's see here on the replay. Did he get all ball? No, I don't no, think so. I think you're right. I think he got the right ankle on the back side, and that's why the referee drew the blue card. And this is going to be a shootout where they'll put the ball 50 feet away, and Nick Hovaker has to come in, a kid from Maryland, has to come in cold off the bench and face one of the most feared scorers in the league. He's staring him down from 50 feet away. This is not how you want your Friday night to begin. Hovacker prepped at Chesapeake High School, which is in the Baltimore metro area. Just to set this up for the fans for a moment, Cabral will go one-on-one -on -one with the keeper. The ball is locked. All the rest of the teams are along the midfield strike. As soon as the referee blows the whistle, the ball's in play. The other players can come into play. One thing that Dennison likes to do is kind of lift it over the keeper. Let's see what strategy he takes here. Will he lift it or will he just pop and shoot? I, my opinion here is that he will lift it, try to lift it over Hoback. He's got five seconds to do whatever he's going to do. Hoback is ready. Cabral's ready. This could be a key moment of this game. He does try yeah, to lift it, it over. And he missed it. And did that? No, they're going to say no. No goal. Wow, that's a great play by Pat Morris. Saved the goal along the back line with his knees, and it allows Hovacker now to have a distribution. Boy, Philly dodged a big bullet there. Absolutely, but it's still a power play now. Blaster number one in the league in that category. 27 goals and 48 tries for 56%. Meanwhile, Philadelphia sixth in the league out of nine in defending the power play. Cabral's a league leader with 11 power play goals. In fact, this Blast team has a chance. They are one of the best power play percentage teams in league history. At 56%, the record is 62%. You know, and what makes it even more impressive for the Blast is the fact that they've done it through injuries. Neto missed the first 11 games of the year. Now he's on the power play unit. And even without Neto, they were, they were in uh, tops in the league. Think about Hovakers. He's come into some tough situations like this before. When Pappas took one in the face in Chicago, he came in and had a terrific game. So they're very confident with him in the pipes. Yeah, well, the Blast have seen Hovacker this year, and they know about him because he is a Baltimore product. It's funny, when I did the radio play-by-play -play for the Blast the last time they were up there, you, you look out on the field, and if you don't know him, you think he's the ball boy. Yeah. He looks really young, but he's a very good young keeper. 
Right now, they're just trying to weather the storm here and kill off this last 40 seconds of power play. Pappas will not be eligible to come back in until the first stoppage after that because he's a keeper. So Hobecker's going to be in there for a little while, and then Philadelphia can worry about maybe trying to cut in to this six-point deficit. Sent into the corner. Cabral with a shot goes wide. Mill will have chest it down and have a go with the left foot. Goes off the post. Cabral now will lay it for Wakefield. Back to Cabral. 12 seconds left in the power play. Aristodemo sends it across. Cabral with seven seconds. Aristodemo from distance. That one got deflected. Here's Cabral looking for his 12th, and he gets it just as the power play expires. Far post, upper 90. You're not going to stop that one. And look at Dennison. When they're raising money for the U.S. Army tonight, he's saluting the fans. And Dennison Cabral with power play goal number 12. Peter Papp is back out on the field, but the Blasts lead the game eight to nothing here in the second quarter. And for Dennison Cabral and the Blast, the 28th power play goal of the season for Baltimore. Let's take a look at it on the backside. Upper 90, Hofacker had to come out because Cabral had all the real estate. And by the time he did it, the ball was past him. For a guy who's five foot four, he really puts some power behind the shot, doesn't he? He has got a foot, he's got a heart. Two major knee surgeries, back-to-back -back seasons after the age of 30, have not slowed down one of the greatest players in the game. Cabral from Aristodemo. Aristodemo's second assist of the night. Cabral's second goal of the night, 23rd of the year, on the power play at 9.47 of the second. So now it's 8-0. I mean, Philadelphia's just got to be totally disheartened here. They came in, they know they needed to win. One more loss and they're pretty much out of it. But right from the start, they have just not had what it's uh, what it's taken to stay with the blast. Sam Lee and Adam Bruckner are the assistants for Philadelphia. They're on the bench while Don DeAmber, the head coach, yeah, is out on the field. They're trying to figure it out too. They came down with good intentions. I'm sure the bus ride was fairly good. But, uh, you know, you come to Baltimore, and this is what happens. Blaster 10 and 2 this year at home, and they're 32 and 10 over the last two and a half years. It's a tough place to win. Always has been. And now Baltimore just content to slow the pace down a bit. 424 remains in the first half. It's Philadelphia who has to chase and force the action. Pierce, stripped of the ball. Here's Susie. he's got numbers. It's actually three on three. Steele sends it across. Susie's gonna try to play it off the boards. Nothing doing there. All right, when it goes bad for you, Steele, that was actually a nice idea, but it hit that blue shelf that separates the glass from the board and just took a weird bounce and Philly couldn't control. 50-50 ball off the head of the blast. See Salenza there. Here's Wakefield with a steal. Neto. Neto. Ah, uh, it just slides right by Barton. Tries to set up Aristodemo. It was a tough angle for him, the way he had his body turned. Neto just sheds his man. Shoot, safe by Pappas. Just the little things, just to create opportunity. He'll, he'll use his arms when he has to. He'll use his hip when he has to. Salenza with a shot just wide. Pappas can't get that one. What Philly does well just to clear the midfield. Foul in the midfield on Namuski. Yeah, they took that restart a little too quickly for Kelly Mox Tace. You see the time, 3.09 remaining, first half, Baltimore eight. Philadelphia nothing. The kicks got to score something before the half. Yeah, that would give them a boost. But in order to do it, they got to take the ball away from the blast. Here's DeAmber now. Barton finds the Muskie, the Macedonian, off the wall. Hey, hey. uh, Barton inadvertently tripped up Wakefield in the area, but they're going to come back and Call that foul, I guess. And how about P.J. Wakefield setting up shop inside the box after making a jaunt all the way downfield? And again, it's that it's that mantra that Danny Kelly has insisted upon, and it's worked. 
especially in uh, the last 10 games, Blaster 8-2, and two, is getting back behind the ball, getting four or five back, and making any chance that the opponent takes difficult, and that's exactly what the Blast have done here tonight. Goalkeeper distribution for Sagu. He quickly counts players. Well, he's the general out there, make no mistake about it. And, and he waited too yeah, long. Too he's long. only got five seconds to get rid of the ball. While he was counting players, he saw that Philadelphia was down a man. And while he was sitting there counting, five seconds went off. So here's an opportunity now, as you see Sagu shaking his head. He knows the turnover could hurt, but Philly's got to be able to finish. To this point, they have not been able to do that. Namoski to trigger, and Don Amber is going to take one of his timeouts. And they'll go over and talk things over. It's a, it's a good timeout because this Philly needs this. Down 8 nothing here in Baltimore on the road. Baltimore, of course, 10 and 2 at home this year. This is a chance now where they can get a 2, a cheap 2, take advantage of a blast turnover, and at least start the process of changing the tempo of this game. Here you see Don D'Ambra. He's as Philly as a cheesesteak. Northeast Catholic High School in Philadelphia. A lot of these Kicks players have Philly connections. It's a very homegrown team. A lot of guys went to Temple or are from Philly or from the great Philadelphia University soccer program. Yep, they've done a good job in Philadelphia. They're second in the league in attendance. They play at the uh, at the Spectrum out there, and the pace, uh, you know, the pace of the game is good. The fans have a good time. Blast lead the league in attendance here in Baltimore, averaging better than 7,000. So it's ironic, or how ironic is it that you got two clubs that are 90 miles apart? from one another on the, in the eastern part of the country that are running neck and neck as far as getting fans out to their games. And two of the longest running teams in the league. Obviously 28 years of indoor soccer in Baltimore and the Kicks who started as an expansion team in 96. Won a title last year and are scrapping here tonight. First trying to get on the scoreboard in hopes of getting into the postseason party once again. Philadelphia just got granted a team in the outdoor MLS so that's a that's a rich vibrant soccer market up there. Here's Donatelli now. He runs over the ball. Susi to Newsom and hits D'Ambro who finds the back of the net. At first I thought boy Newsom really didn't hit that very well but it was perfectly played to D'Ambro. Three touches and you know what if you're Philly whatever it takes and you don't often see that in the game usually you would assume that Newsom in that position would take the shot but the defender came out to guard him and that left on D'Ambro all alone let's see it here Susie the one touch and then Newsom finding D'Ambra at the doorstep goes far post on Segu and at least for the moment there's some life with Philadelphia and the 11th restart goal allowed by Baltimore this year tops in the league so if they're vulnerable that's where they're vulnerable they'll give them a little bit of a boost but they've got to keep Baltimore off the scoreboard the rest of the way foul called at the yellow line on Tom Ayers who gave Garcia a shot it was that man's 16th goal of the campaign the Amber last year led Philadelphia with 85 points in their championship season when they beat Detroit in the final. Cabral oh. crashing, he goes off the crossbar. You just never know where he's going to show up. What a rocket that was. That would hurt me. <laughs> that would leave a three foot hole going out if it hit you. Millwood takes a shove from Meyer. Shut. He goes down like a hockey goalie. Yeah. Butterfly, Pete Pappas did on that. Millwood in front there, into the area. Pappas just punched him inadvertently, but he punched him, it looked like. Now we've got men down all over the place. Well, I, it looks like they're going to give this ball to Philadelphia, and for the life of me, I'm not sure how. Let's take a look. There's the ball in play. That's the miss by Millwood. How is that ball going to Philadelphia? Pappas looking for the ball, looking to try to maybe punch that ball out, and he found uh, Millwood's noggin. It might well, be a drop ball, we'll see. Michelle Millwood took the brunt of that. Well, one referee on the far side said it was Philly ball, but you're right here. It looks like it will be a drop ball just in the corner of the box. No, it's not. Nope. It's going to be Philadelphia ball. Free kick Philadelphia. So to add injury to insult. <laughs> Millwood shaking his head, I'm sure. But he looks like he's okay now. 2.09 to go in the first half. It's always a spirited rivalry when these two get together, and oh, it is getting spirited oh, here tonight. Philly actually leads the all-time series by five games, 42-37. The Blast, though, have owned them in the postseason, winning six out of eight. Here's a chance. Steal. 
Nelson got his body in there, and the foul called on Steele as he tried to get to the ball, and Steele is not happy with that call. But one thing about Johnny Steele, and he's young now, probably around 22 years old, he has to learn how to control his body a little better in those tight situations. Uh, he, he commits far too often fouls, and that's an example right there. Under two minutes to go in the half now. Kicks with a kick in their own end, and Pappas now, who's back into the game. Has been for the last several minutes. Newsom with the header. Steele tried to finish with the left, and he put it high. Boy, everything but the finish on that one. Great pass, cross field from Newsom. Steele did a good job of settling and reversing his field. The only thing that was missing on that play was the finish. We've seen some great displays of skill in the indoor game here tonight. Lucio trying to step over Barton. Advantage play. Flick it out to Aristodemo. Shot goes off the glass. Lucio is there. He nearly put it. And it goes off. Pat Morris and in. And Lucio's going to get credit for that, but Pat Morris knows it's an unlucky bounce. Well, it is an unlucky bounce, but it's all created by pressure from the Blacks. They've owned the box in Philadelphia's end. Anywhere Peter Pappas turns, it looks like there's a blast player right now. And until and unless that changes, the, the result won't change. There's Lucio, and of course, Pat Morris didn't want it to go that way, but the pressure from the blast leads to the goal. It's tough when a big veteran, a savvy veteran like he, uh, Pat Morris, that happens to him. Tenth goal of the year for Lucio. Is unassisted as it's the own goal off Pat Morris. So if Philadelphia had any momentum, it was probably sucked out of their balloon with that goal, but they can answer back here in the final 60 seconds of the half. Susan, the only guy down there, though. Marples to Barton. Lucio all over him. 48 seconds left. Angel Revillo. Kicks are going in the wrong direction. Yeah, last pressuring in the midfield, doing a good job. Segu couldn't use his hand, so he headed it over the wall. Not, not sure Segu had to do anything there, to tell you the truth. As Wakefield was lurking around for the blast two, safe play, that's okay. But now it gives them restart top of the box. Last time they had this, they scored. See what kind of play they've got drawn up here with 37 and two tenths seconds left. Susie to D'Ambra, four man wall right there for Baltimore, and it wasn't getting through. Held in though by Donatelli, 30 seconds to go. Revilla off the crossbar. And Salenza dumps it long, chested out at midfield there by Susie. Donatelli, 20 seconds left. They try to feed D'Ambra, he'll pop back up. Shot blocked, but a foul call. Well, that's probably the last chance Philly will have this half with only 14 seconds to go. And it looks like the Blast will go into the uh, halftime with an eight-point lead. Free kick Baltimore. Blast play like this with the khaki uniforms, they may do it more often. Yep. Although, although they're going to have to order some more because they're auctioning them off after the game. Some lucky fans are going to have them. Wow. They set up his man Pappas with the last save of the first half. And Salenza looks up at the scoreboard and puts his hands on his knees because he knows he missed a chance right there at the horn. That man, Dennison Cabral, has two goals. And we're halfway through the major indoor soccer league game of the week. The Blast and the Kicks head to the locker rooms with the Blast leading Philadelphia 10-2. We got interviews, stats, highlights, and more coming up. But first, this quick timeout. You're watching the MISL on Fox Soccer Channel, where the homestanding Baltimore Blast have had a great first half against their I-95 rivals, the Philadelphia Kicks. Easy goals like that have staked them to an eight-point lead at the intermission. Our halftime show is coming right back. Stick around. You're watching the major indoor soccer league game of the week exclusively on Fox Soccer Channel. We are orthopedic care at the University of Pennsylvania Health System. We are the nation's first department of orthopedic surgery. We are consistently listed in Best Doctors in America and Philadelphia Magazine's top docs. 
We are ranked among the nation's best orthopedic care by U.S. News and World Report. We are the University of Pennsylvania Health System. We are medicine. You're watching Fox Soccer Channel Primetime, brought to you by Jose Cuervo Tradicional. 100% agave. Jose Cuervo invites you to enjoy tonight's primetime lineup on FSC. Liberty, rated T for team. Halftime at First Mariner Arena in Baltimore with a hometown blast leading the Philadelphia Kicks 10-2 on the Major Indoor Soccer League Game of the Week here on Fox Soccer Channel. Ken Tomash and Gary Stein with you. And Gary, we talked about how important it was for the Kicks to come out and, and win this game because they're trying to get into the playoffs. That first half, it looked like Baltimore was the team that was struggling to get into the playoffs and really needed and wanted this game. Yeah, I'm not sure the blast would even allow Philadelphia to even think about winning this game right at the start of the game. I mean, you saw the pressure that Peter Pappas was under, the way that Baltimore was controlling the midfield and, and uh, basically peppering the goal and it didn't let up for the first 30 minutes Philly tried to get back in that game with that restart goal to make it eight to two but the response from the blast was another goal and all of a sudden it's 10 2 at the half and Philly's in a very precarious position now Philadelphia this week they signed Casey Barton a veteran defender you know you don't forget a whole lot when you're trying to play mix and match at the back they've been unlucky but defensively you know they've been a little bit shaky because Baltimore I mean five goals there in that first half Philly needs to shore up the back yeah and it's hard for a guy like Casey Barton I mean you think about it these players that are playing all year long they're, they play 23 games you know here comes Casey Barton he could be in great shape but he does look like he's in good shape doesn't mean that he's in game shape and he and but then the most important thing is he's probably at least a half a step behind and when you're playing a team like Baltimore that smells the playoffs after not making the playoffs last year and you've got the speed that they bring downfield especially guys like Millwood Neto etc it's hard for a guy like Casey Barton to make a big impact in that first game obviously not to pin anything on Casey Barton it's a team game and Baltimore has had some great goals we saw two by Dennis and Cabral were just magic well Cabral is the finisher and he's always been the finisher in Baltimore you know there was a thought back in the old NPSL days in the mid 90s when uh, Cabral was playing in the CISL Remember with the well. Washington Warthogs he tried out for the NPSL and there was a guy who told him you know what I don't think you're big enough to make it in this league well a couple of years later Dennis and Cabral did make it in the league and 11 years later he's one of the top scorers in the league All right, we're gonna take a quick break when we come back Back, we'll talk with David Bascom, assistant coach and player for the Baltimore Blast, about his off the field works. It's all coming up here on the MISL Game of the Week, where the Blast lead the kicks 10 2 at halftime. Stay with us, you're watching Fox Soccer Channel. As the evidence most clearly shows, after your visit in these countries, there has been a remarkable change in the standard of play and enthusiasm for football. And what were in those packages? You surely cannot expect us to believe that you were only handing over these boots. So it doesn't make sense. Viu come to zoom football. Welcome to football. Attention men with thinning hair. Salon expert Giuseppe Franco recommends Proceed for his Beverly Hills celebrities. Just listen to what he says about Proceed. Well, first, it's the only product I've ever seen that works on thinning hair just by using it once every 90 days. It's not a daily regimen or twice daily regimen. Who has the time for that nonsense? Just use Proceed every 90 days and it works. When I go like this with my hand, it, it, it feels like I have a, a full head of hair back there. It's like I really notice a tremendous difference. My hair is thicker, uh, fuller, and you don't notice the, the, the thinning spots. He ran his hand through my hair and you know he looked at the top and he's like, it works, it works. I don't own the company. Well, I don't know anything about it. I just know that this is the greatest product ever for the appearance of your thinning hair. Look, stop hiding your hair underneath these caps. Stop denying that your hair looks bad and do something about it. You can be on the road to fuller, thicker hair right now by getting on a Proceed program. Hey, I'm Giuseppe Franco. I'm not putting my name on the line for something that doesn't work. Now you can try Proceed absolutely risk-free. The exact product selling at Giuseppe Franco's of Beverly Hills for $450 for just $19.95. Plus, if you order today, Proceed will also include its volumizing shampoo and conditioner absolutely free. Proceed, we're the one. Just one application every 90 days. Operators are standing by, so have your credit card ready to order right now. 
Does scalp med work? I really can see the difference. I can see this hair coming in. I have hair on my head. I can brush my hair now. Within two months, I, I've got my hair back. It's just like a second chance in life. No hormones, no surgery. There's nothing better out there. It's your own hair growing back. It's your own hair growing back. It was nothing short of a miracle for me. It works. It works. It worked for me. I am living proof that Scalp Med works. Scalp Med works. It works. It works. Call the toll-free number on your screen and try Scalp Med absolutely risk-free. Or for faster service, visit our website at scalpmed.com. The best soccer in the world, indoor and outdoor, is right here on Fox Soccer Channel. Tomorrow morning, it's the Barclays Premier League. Blackburn against America's team, Fulham. 10 a.m. Eastern time. That's tomorrow right here on Fox Soccer Channel. Well, here we're at First Mariner Arena in Baltimore with a blast leading the Philadelphia Kicks 10-2 on the MISL Game of the Week. Now, the Major Indoor Soccer League prides itself on the work it does in its communities. It's nine communities around the U.S. and Mexico. And a lot of that is happening right here tonight with the Blaster playing in those Army camouflage jerseys and they'll auction off to benefit the families of those servicemen and women who've been injured while fighting for our country overseas. Also, they do a lot of other work in the community, the Blast does, and Gary Stein caught up with, uh, with uh, David Bascom of the Baltimore Blast for his take on some of that work. David, your exploits on the field are legendary, over a thousand points scored, but let's talk about some of the things that you do off the field. Yes, off the field, you know, definitely with the Baltimore Blast, uh, we have a program that's called Power By Me. And Power By Me is set up, you know, against young people, with, uh, you know, against steroids, you know, and drugs. And it's very important that they understand, you know, you know a lot of people, a lot, you know, a lot of these young athletes, you know, they, you know, they don't want to take the easy way out. And they think that's the easiest way to be successful. And it's important, the message going into schools, going into communities, you know, dealing with the young people, you know, it's got to do with the clubs of soccer. So it's great. Now, not only in Baltimore, but you give back to your hometown as well. Definitely, no. We have started the ISL, the Professional Island Soccer League in Bermuda, and we got a program that was started in 2008. It's actually called the Hope for Life program. The Hope for Life program is against drugs and violence, and also is kind of to give, you know, the young men, you, you know, also women, those opportunities, you know, to succeed. We all have these dreams when we are young, and to have these dreams and kind of, you, you know, to be able to reach them, you know, and that's what it's all about, you know, to make sure they stay focused. Now, it takes a special person to do these types of things. What motivates you in your life? to do that you know I think it was a lot to do with my father you know my father base has been behind me you know and kind of showed me one does independence so it was very important you know so that's one of my biggest motivations all right sounds good hope to see you back on the field soon thank you Ken back to you all right Gary thank you the blast without David Basco but they hope to get him back quite lead the Philadelphia kicks 10-2 at halftime we'll have more on the halftime show from First Mariner Arena on Fox Soccer Channel coming up after this timeout stick around I'm bad at duck pins. Thanks for trying, Dad. I tried line dancing. I could have been doing a straight line. My singing is so bad, they won't let me sing in church. I can't ski. When I get to the bottom of the slope, I look like a big snowball. I can't do a somersault. I always go sideways. I can't water ski. I end up getting dragged behind the boat. I can't juggle, no way. Local Jiffy Lube owners aren't great at everything, but they're experts at changing your oil. No wonder over a million Marylanders a year trust us to change their oil. Let us change yours, too. How to order a Cuervo Black and Cola. Cuervo Black and Cola. No, no, buddy. With Cola. Jose Cuervo Black Medallion. Aged tequila with a smoother taste that's perfect with Cola. Take a moment and look at your life. Are you doing what you truly want and living your dreams? Sadly, most of us aren't. Maybe you're stuck in a dead-end job, unhappy with your health, body, or relationships. Perhaps you tried self-help methods that didn't work. Introducing VisionBoardSite.com, the online life-changing program that uses groundbreaking research proven to work. The secret? The Vision Board uses state-of-the-art tools to put you in a focused state of mind so you can just go for it. If you've ever tried the methods of law of attraction, visualization, or cut-and-paste goal boards, they are now supercharged. Recommended by trainers and scientists as one of the most effective techniques to turn your goals and dreams into reality. Hi, my name is Tim Ralston and I've found the most successful people that I've met have one thing in common, focus. From top Olympians to successful business people, they know what they want, they know where they're going, and what they want to do with their lives. They have a life plan. 
I created visionboardsite.com so that you can have a life plan too. What we need to do is to tap into what's here and download it so that you can see it, feel it, and hear it every day. View your vision board often and soon it will become a part of you. In your private online workspace, you'll receive unlimited access, a step-by-step -step guide, a library of impacting images, empowering affirmations, motivational music, and progress tracking tools. Finally, a tool that will help you achieve all the desires you've ever wanted. Financial freedom, the body, or relationship you want are all possible. And best of all, you can do it quickly and easily. With no software to download, you just point and click. Your goals and dreams will be in front of your eyes whenever you want. Because we want everyone to achieve success, we're offering a $5.95 membership plus a risk-free trial. Act now and you'll receive the goal-setting tool free, a $160 value free. The Vision Board site is the official vision board for the Opus movie. Watch for it. Don't miss CONCACAF Men's Olympic Qualifying in Tampa, L.A., and Nashville, March 11th to 23rd. Two places in Beijing are up for grabs as the USA, Mexico, and six others battle it out. For tickets, visit ussoccer.com. Back in Baltimore with a blast. Lead the kicks 10-2 at halftime. Ken Tomash and Gary Stein with you on the Major Indoor Soccer League Game of the Week here on Fox Soccer Channel. Let's take a look at those first half highlights, almost all of them. But for the guys in the camouflage jerseys, first we'll take a look at the stats, and you can see, uh, actually we'll take a look at the highlights first, and then we'll see exactly how Baltimore got to this point. And the first six minutes or so were pretty even, but then Baltimore got on the board and they never looked back. Sagu stood tall in nets, but it was Pappas who was hit by Ryan Pierce there early. Yeah, Neto set it up for the blast in a position that he likes. And there's the finish. There's the second goal, Mike looking land, kind of a carbon copy of the first one, Ken. This time, in courtesy of Aristodemo, Neto sets Wakefield up, who sets up Cabral on goal number three. Aristodemo starts this one here, and then Cabral on the power play nets that one for the blast. And as he salutes the fans, it's 8-0 Baltimore. Philadelphia momentarily on a restart gets back into the game on a two-pointer by the air to make it 8-2. But then the blast, here's Lucio on a shot, putting some pressure inside the box of Philadelphia. Then you'll see Pat Morris, the all-pro defender, tap it into the back of his net. And that's how you get to 10-2. To and look at the shot total for the blast right now. Yeah, I mean, when it's 3-1, to one, that's not a good sign. That's no no surprise that uh, Philadelphia only has the one goal. They've only got eight shots. Pappas has been busy. He and Nick Hoviker, who had to come in briefly when Pappas was serving a penalty, combined for 11 saves. But, man, five goals on 24 shots. And it's been that relentless pressure that has turned into all sorts of problems. Also, you see Philadelphia trying to be physical. Ten fouls to the Blast's four fouls, but it really doesn't matter. Right now, after 30 minutes in this game, the Blast have just displayed too many weapons for Philadelphia to stay with at this point. So the, the opening few minutes here of the second half is really gonna tell the tale. If Philadelphia can come out and start to establish something and chip away, I mean, if they get a three, they're only five points behind. But if Baltimore comes out and plays like they did in the first half, it's over. Yeah, first five minutes of the third quarter are gonna be huge, there's no doubt about that. You know, we talked about in the open so, uh, a couple of the big weapons that the Blast have. Neto certainly has made an impact in the game with an assist and the beginning of another assist that went to Wakefield. But what's interesting is that Michelle Millwood has not scored a point right in this game, yet the Blast still are outscoring Philadelphia 10-2. to Well, David Bascom, assistant coach, was with us at halftime. He's with us now. David, is that uh, some of the best 30 minutes of soccer your team has played this year? Yeah, you know, it's great. You know, where you can come out, you know, score 10 points. You know, but we still got some work to do. You know, we have to stay consistent, which is very important, and we have to take, you know, just control of the game. David, how important was the 12-day layoff here for the Blast at this point in the season? I tell you, it was great because we had some interest, you know, to get some guys back healthy. You know, it was very important for us. Now, this first five minutes, David, of the third quarter, is this, how important is it going to be for you guys to not let Philly claw back into this? Well, very important. You know, we have to step up. You know, we have to play together as a team, and we have to make sure is that we stay consistent to what we're doing. You know, once we lose the floor of the game, there we get lost. David, thanks for your time. Best of luck second half. All right, thank you. David Basco, a class act, a terrific player. Glad he's with us as Danny Kelly's right-hand man.
Yeah, and you know, it's interesting you say that because you took the words out of my mouth. These guys really are a tandem. They were a tandem in Harrisburg when they played together for the Heat. They were a tandem in Baltimore when they won championships with the Blast. And now they're a tandem behind the bench. David, as we heard in the uh, in the halftime interview, starting to do uh, some, some things for his, his native country, Bermuda, bringing soccer back there. And just a great uh, tandem they are here in Baltimore. And Danny Kelly seems to have found his stride as a coach. I'm sure David Bascom has helped him, but the Blast were up and down a little bit. I mean, missing the playoffs last year obviously hurt him. And then they got off to the great start this year. Then they struggled a bit, but he's, to his credit, they righted the ship. Yeah, and Danny said, you know, the true test for a coach is how do you break a losing streak for your team? And the Blast had lost seven of eight games coming into the stretch now over their last 10, where they've won eight of 10. And he figured it out. He figured to go back on basics, back to defense. And that's how the Blast and Danny Kelly have come out of that funk. Here they come, early third quarter. Toe poke by Dotto Neto went high, and Pappas gets the service from his man and fires it out for D'Ambra. And just another piece of Neto's game, another piece to his arsenal. You would expect Neto in that situation as he hustles here to knock it off the boards and find a man in the box. This time he decided to try to take the shot, and that almost went in. So to start the third quarter now, Baltimore attacking from right to left, wearing the camouflage jersey, so they'll action off, auction off after the game. And Philadelphia in white, here's Pat Morris, the victim of an unlucky bounce late in the first half that led to a goal. And attacking is the key word, because the Blast knows that it has to win the first five minutes to attempt to put Philadelphia away. So even though, even though they're leading by eight points, there's no give up here by the Blast. Here's D'Ambra in a crowd. Or I should say there's no give in. Steele flicks it with the outside of his boot, but it goes right to Ravi Aristodemo, who had two assists in the first half. Blast just seemed to be getting to the balls first in this game. Aristodemo wanted somebody to show for him, and now he'll just play it back and head off onto the bench. Well, and it gives the chance for the Blast to make changes here. Lucio and Pierce have come out for the Blast as they get fresh legs now with about two minutes gone in the third quarter. Carlos Garcia can't get that one through Steele. Tonight's game news, Jersey auction. Wendell Regis. Back to Pappas. Reveal finds Steele. You know, Peter's usually, uh, talking about Peter Pappas, the goalkeeper, is usually a difference maker in the game. But the pressure from the blast in the first half was just too much for him to make a difference. Reveal to Newsom. 1v1 with Nelson. Poked off the boards, nobody there. Garcia sets sail. Can't get through Williams. That's a nice play by the rookie, but he gave up on the ball. Yeah, Chris Williams, the turf monster, got in there. Yep. Drew Kopp, who has seen limited minutes tonight because he's coming back from a knee injury, uh, fouls his man there. Or gets fouled. Carlos Garcia, Carlos Garcia the commits the foul for the blast. He's one of the leading foulers in the league. But that was probably a good one. This cop would have been off to the races. Here's Reveal. Lucio can't get through Reveal. Newsom calling for the ball. The yellow line has it. Shoved off the ball. Battle Royal, Royal Ford at the yellow line. And the handball finally called. Yeah, not good things usually happen to you when you're on the ground, handballs included. And that's what happened to John Barry Newsom there. But give Billy Nelson credit on the defense. Didn't back down top of the yellow line and gave John Barry Newsom all he could handle. Some deft footwork there. Newsom sends him into the boards and fouls him. It'll be a free kick from midfield, and Newsom not pleased with the call. Well, and that's two quick fouls now on John Barry Newsom early in the third quarter. In the MISL, you're only allowed three and a half. If you commit the fourth, it's a two minute penalty on your team. Set long now. Cop on his man and foul. Now oh, they call that one on Michael Todd for basically manhandling Drew, uh, Drew Cobb in the corner. Wakefield gets on that one. Little bounce here. It'll stay in play. Look at Land. Has a goal tonight, but hasn't played much despite that. Papa scoops it in the air. Yeah, nice lift by Peter. 
Center by Aristodemo to set up looking land. Toke poke to Cabral. Sets up Aristodemo. His shot is blocked by Cock. Oh, Cabral so confident on the ball. And now he'll trot off and they'll make a change. Blast are blessed with two great forwards who can handle the ball. Neto and Cabral, they don't run on the same line, so they get the benefit of having one or the other on the field at all times. Salenza keeps it in Baltimore's clutches. Ryan Pierce to Garcia. Four and a half minutes gone in this third quarter, and it has been a stalemate to this point. Yeah, but the Blast dictating pace, that first five minutes, the Blast are clearly winning it right now. Steele makes a hip check from Pierce, who just really just stood there. Pappas draws a beat on that, has to leap up high over Garcia. And again, the Blast just applying pressure, pe peppering the goal, whether it be from outside the three-point line or wherever. Oh, and now well. a whistle, it looks like Mark Bailey, the official on the other side of the field, has issued a yellow card. And we'll see which, one, which way this one goes. Somebody said something they weren't supposed to. The officials are talking it over here. We do have a microphone down there. Sometimes that's a good idea and sometimes not. <laughs> is it a bench monitor or is he? Nope, he's sending Oh, Jonathan Steele, you talked about him having to keep his emotions in check. You can see his emotions on his face. Yeah, that's the biggest flaw in Johnny Steele's game. He had a falling out, as I mentioned in the first half, with Danny Kelly here in Baltimore. And uh, that's just another example of that. And here he just gives the referee a little bit too much lip. And that's going to cost Johnny Steele five minutes. When you're trailing by eight points, you want every single one of your players available. And now Johnny can't come back, not only after five minutes, but until the next dead ball. So it could be more. Yeah, that uh, sometimes it's not even what you say. That sarcastic clapping. I've seen the guy get a yellow card for that. Randy Soderman got a yellow for that a couple weeks ago. And again, a yellow card does not result in a power play. So Steele can't play, but his team does not have to play shorthanded. But at 4.51, up the third, he's got a yellow, five-minute misconduct. Nice win by Pat Morris to keep that ball alive to Don D'Ambra. Oh, shot great high. shot. Martin heads it down. Morris, oh, he almost redeemed himself for the own goal, but it was just bouncing right there at the corner, and Sagu pinned it. Like a cat to the far post. Billy Nelson was screening his own keeper, but since the shot, oh, what a great play by Neto, which almost goes in. Boy, he's fun to watch. Unless you're Peter Pappas, in which case it's not so much fun after all. Well, certainly not tonight. But just to finish the thought on Segu, Nelson actually screened his own keeper, but the, the, the shot didn't have a lot of pace on it, and that allowed Segu to come out and make the play. Look at the blast winning the ball in midfield. Pappas had to go, couldn't get it. Oh, and it's bearing the back of the net. Oh, Lucio with his second. A rare misplay by Peter Pappas. And Mill would make it the easiest assist of his season. And what a finish by Lucio with that booming right foot. The rookie out of Brazil playing in only his 16th game now has 11 goals to tonight. You talk about all the weapons of blast have, and here's the replay. Millwood on the turnover from Pappas, and boom, he knows what to do with it. There's no keeper in the land that's going to make that save. And Lucio now gives the blast a 10-point lead. And for Millwood, not only his 21st assist, but his 65th point, tying his career high set a year ago. Well, the first five minutes, Philadelphia at least held them scoreless, but it was at the 6.02 mark that Lucio connected from Millwood, and it's 12-2. Kind of a groundhog day from the first quarter when the Blast held them scoreless, or I should say Philly held them scoreless for 6.12, and then the floodgates opened up after that. So it's 12-2 now. since it was not a power play. Johnny Steele cannot get free. He's got to serve all of his five minutes and more. They try to set up Aristodemo and he nearly scored. Oh, that's a 
that's a weak, that's a soft foul right there. Wakefield and Rivio just going for a ball and they connect with the hips. Let me tell you something. I, I must have called over 100 blast games in my career with them. I have never seen this team play as determined and create chances and opportunities like they have tonight. They are absolutely on fire tonight. Aristodemo with a set piece. His team leads by 10 with 8.04 to go in the third. He's got Cabral and Millwood as options. Here's Cabral. Takes the extra step and that let Revio get in there. Pierce. Here's Millwood. Nice one touch up to Pierce. Namaski with a good tackle, I thought, from the side. Could have been called from behind, but. Well, I think I think Namaski got enough ball there. Yep. And it was probably a good no call by the official. Reveal. All in all, and let me tell you, this game's hard to call. All oh, yeah. in all, I think the officials have done a good job yep. tonight. Drew Cobb. Nice to the dime. I guess his knee's okay. Thanks for asking. Tony Donatelli now. Donatelli again gets to the outside on Pierce, sends it off the wall in front is Morris, and he puts it into the second level. Well, almost. I mean, great idea by Donatelli. Off the boards at the right angle. Maybe it had a little much pace, but you can't ask for much better of a setup than that. Pat Morris kind of hit it off his ankle rather than his toe. Uh, we've got to step aside, but only briefly. The major indoor soccer league game of the week. We'll be right back. We've got 7-0-1 left in quarter number three. And the Baltimore Blast leads the Philadelphia Kicks by a score of 12-2. Stay with us. Gary Stein and I will be right back to Baltimore, where the action is fast and furious and fiery. Lucio's goal has made it a 12-2 game. Stick around. You're watching the MISL on Fox Soccer Channel. As the evidence most clearly shows, after your visit in these countries, there has been a remarkable change in the standard of play and enthusiasm for football. And what were in those packages? You surely cannot expect us to believe that you were only handing over these boots. So it doesn't make sense. Viu come to zum football. Welcome to football. How to order a Cuervo Black and Cola. Cuervo Black and Cola. No, no, buddy. With Cola. Jose Cuervo Black Medallion. Aged tequila with a smoother taste that's perfect with Cola. Turning Point. Fall of Liberty. Rated T for Teen. This is the major indoor soccer league game of the week, and the Baltimore Blast leads the Philadelphia Kicks 12-2 in the third, 7-0-1 to play in it. Tomorrow, just after noon Eastern, Barnsley against Chelsea in the FA Cup sixth round live here on Fox Soccer Channel. Don't miss it. Sagu and the Baltimore Blast lead their I-95 rivals to Kicks 12-2. Next goal crucial. Philadelphia wants to get it. Tom Myers. Right into the hands of Segu. Yeah, I think Segu's got to slow it down here a little bit. He made an uncharacteristic distribution error. Blast, though, catch a break here. Todd with a shot off the post. Follow up by Salenza goes off his own man. Carlos Garcia was in an unfortunate position. Yeah, he took the rocket from Salenza. That one was well met. Don D'Ambra, Philadelphia's player coach. The last of that special happy 11th birthday. To Angel Revillo. Back to D'Ambra. He tried to get it back to Revillo in the area, but Mike Lookingland was there. Yeah, Garcia was in the front, too. So again, Danny Kelly preaches double team as much as he can the runner. And there, there was evidence of that. 50 50 ball. It's won by Billy Nelson. Comes down to Chris Williams. Sends it off the glass, headed away. Namaski brings it down. Finds D'Ambra. They'll try to roll it back to Barton, but Baltimore is there. Adato Neto doing it at both ends of the floor, like you said. That's the example. Adato Neto, now that'll never show up in the box score. 
but it denies a chance and almost leads to a goal. Detroit leads Orlando. A Philadelphia loss and a Detroit win tonight clinches the playoffs for Detroit. And very nearly clinches the playoffs for Baltimore. There's some tiebreakers involved, but they'd be sitting in good position. Philadelphia would not be out of it yet, but they're going to need some help if they don't come back in this one. Here's a chance for Philadelphia. Barton a little bit too much caught up in the corner. A Baltimore win here tonight, Ken. All they would need is another California loss, and pretty much they're in. Donatelli with a rocket, but Sagu had it measured all the way. Yep, held his ground, middle of the box. That's all you need to do on the toe poke by Barton. Sagu with another save. He's played well. He's not been severely tested tonight by Philadelphia, but he's made the saves when he's had to. Ristadimos. Looking land, looking like he's going to size up a shot. It's blocked by Regis. As the auction land at the end of this quarter. Fieldwood. Five minutes now to go in the third quarter. Baltimore has the only goal of the third, but they have controlled this game in about the six minute mark of the first. Here's Susie. Off to Myers with a shot and saved by Segu. Well read by Segu, who stood his ground on the near post. 6-6-5, Drew Kopp sends that one long. Segu has it all the way. Visit for more information. Rudy Garcia will send it back to Segu. Baltimore has shook them all night long here. Philadelphia with no answers. Revio, Morris. And Rubio had to extend his little frame there to try to get that one clear. Baltimore has it back. Cabral, oh, he tried to nutmeg Morris to set up Millwood. Four blast defenders inside midfield created that turnover for the blast. And again, they will trap the ball wherever it is. Donatelli finds the muskie. Left footed shot goes high. That one is into the second pick. Yeah, nice move by Sandre Damaski to get inside of Cabral and use that left foot, which is the natural foot for the midfielder who helped Philadelphia win a championship last year in 2007. But like most of the things that Philly has done tonight, either high, either wide, but not in the back of the net. In one of those nights for Philadelphia, Segu sends it long, looking for looking land. Looking land gets hit from behind by Parton and grabs his face. And Kelly Mock is going to have a talk with him. That's actually Michael Todd. Todd, a good looking rookie out of Cleveland, England, was the CAA player of the year when he played collegiately at Hofstra. The Blast was able to get him in the draft, the amateur draft this past year. And he opened up the season with a couple of goals against Philadelphia right here in Baltimore. Indoor soccer observers compare young Michael Todd to a veteran in Milwaukee by the name of Michael King, who will go down as one of the greats ever. And who just announced his retirement recently, effective at season's end. Michael King has, uh, what, 20 seasons now in the indoor game, and now a yellow card. And I think this one may be against the blast. Mark Bailey will make the call. Be the second time tonight that he has said, I will not put up with what you just said. Uh, yeah, we do have a mic down there, and I said sometimes it wasn't a great idea. Whoa. Sometimes a little too good. Yeah. And, uh, uh, may, he may be sure not appearing in the rest of this game if he keeps it up. Well, Carlos Garcia will take a seat for Danny Kelly, and he'll be ineligible for the next five minutes. Garcia is a fine young player. He scored in seven of his last game, uh, nine games, 16 points for the Blast. Blast actually lost him in the expansion draft to Detroit last year, but wanted it back so bad they made a trade with the ignition to get him back. Pappas now, again, not a power play, but we won't be seeing Mr. Garcia for at least the next five minutes of playing time, which will spill over into the fourth quarter. Here's Nigel Marples, who we haven't seen much of tonight, trying to squirt through there. 
Finds D'Ambra. Spins on his man. Sets up Myers, but it's blocked in front. That's a great move by D'Ambra. Trying to keep it alive inside the box for his teammate. He'll turn 36 in May, but as you mentioned, he really has not lost a step. No, he really hasn't. Every time we go up to Philly to call their games, I mean, he just, he's always on it. I've never seen him have a bad game. Pat Morris. Speaking of great players, yeah. how many years has he done it? Over Not and over. 90-some blocks one year, over 400 for the career, can hit from three, can play both ways. Although he misses Martinez in the back. What a combination they were last year. Pappas now. Little toe poke it for Namaski. Aristodemo on him. Trying to thread it through to Newsom. Here's Angel Revillo outside the three point line. Morris from three, saved by Sagu. And it's headed back to him. We and talked it, about shooting from three. There you see it. He tried it there. And only the cat like reflexes of Sagu kept it out of the net. Under a minute to go in the third. Wendell Regis. Williams with the slide wins the ball for Baltimore. This place is loud tonight, isn't it? They have every reason to be. Here's Tom Myers trying to get outside. Shot kicked away on the doorstep by P.J. Wakefield. 30 seconds left in the quarter. Myers has a go. Scramble for the ball in front. Segu says, that's mine. Yeah, takes on Newsom and makes the play. That and maybe one other save in the first half of the, of the best plays that Segu has made. Pappas came way out to play it to Myers. 11 seconds left in the quarter as Jonathan steals back from his descent penalty. Williams tried to send it through into the area. Five seconds left. Cabral looks up, tries to catch Pappas off his line, but that'll be the end of the quarter. Well, Baltimore only scored one goal in that quarter, but they have reasserted their dominance. Three quarters down, one to go in Baltimore, and the Blast lead the kicks 12-2. We're going to come back with a kickoff of the fourth quarter and the exciting conclusion of the MISL Game of the Week here on Fox Soccer Channel. Don't touch that dial. We're going to come right back and see if the Blast can close it out next. Watching Fox Soccer Channel Primetime, brought to you by Jose Cuervo Tradicional. 100% agave. Jose Cuervo invites you to enjoy tonight's primetime lineup on FSC. Wednesday, the journey for the CONCACAF Champions Cup is on FSC. It's the first leg of the quarterfinals. Caribbean crown winner Harbor View faces a tough DC United. Then, Municipal from Guatemala takes on MLS champion Houston Dynamo. Wednesday, CONCACAF Champions Cup on FSC. Proactive Solution has good news if you have a difficult pimple or sudden breakout and can't find relief. Because when you order now, you'll get the exclusive refining mask free with your three-piece kit. Just a dab, and the mask is designed to zap problems. It's fast. It's dramatic. I put it on in the evening before I go to bed, and when I wake up in the morning, you don't have acne. That's a good feeling. It works the fastest. It's potent. It's like my little skincare army. Call now and order the amazing proactive solution to heal your acne and help prevent future breakouts. You'll save 50% on proactive when you order in the next four minutes, just $19.95. For on the spot pimple control, I use the refining mask. Just a little dab, that's all you need. It's a proactive best product and it's part of proactive's best offer. Don't just dream of clear, beautiful skin, make it real. Order Proactive now and get a free upgrade to priority shipping. Call 1-800-619-7557. 
15 minutes to play, and Baltimore looking to close out their 15th victory of the campaign while Philadelphia is looking to get something here, anything to try to show some signs of life here in the fourth quarter as they have been, had the game taken to them. Gary Stein, Ken Tomas with you. And Gary, this has uh, not been one of those nice nights for Philadelphia by any stretch. No, of Philadelphia had a 90 mile trip or whatever it was down to Baltimore, but I don't think they expected this from the Blast here tonight. You know, the Blast only outscored them by two in the third quarter, but they controlled all 15 minutes of play. It was 24 to eight at the half in shots in favor of the blast so they continue that 29 shots through the first three quarters against Philadelphia only 13 and I pointed out the fouls at the half Ken and look at them here after three quarters of play when you're out fouling your opponent like that repeatedly throughout a game it shows that you're not getting to the ball first and that's one of the things that's afflicted Philadelphia in and this we've, game. And we've also seen Philly kind of lose their composure at times Carlos Garcia is still in the box for Baltimore after a misconduct call in the fourth quarter is off to a rousing start. End of the third in Orlando, Detroit leading the Sharks 9-2, looking to clinch a playoff berth combined with the result here. If it holds up, here's Millwood. Trying to get to the outside on top. And see how see how wide open looking land was inside the box. Nelson gets that one away from Susie. Millwood is there and it bounces off the boards and Pappas knew it was coming right back to him. Yeah, Millwood's been active tonight for the blast. He's only gotten the one assist on the goal by Lucio in the third quarter. So his, he's got a seven game point streak now, but his six game goal streak could go by the boards unless he scores here in the fourth. The big man, number 23. Gets up high to win that header and set up Ryan Pierce. We scored the first goal of the night, way back at the six minute mark of the first. Namaski wins that ball. Millwood coming into the game tonight for the Blast had 29 points in his last six games, including a nine pointer, four goals, and an assist against Orlando. He can just blow up time to time. Donatelli now leads the break. Here's Namaski. And Wakefield, easy as you please, strips him of the ball. Great clear, Wakefield has an opportunity. Pappas has to come out, and an easy goal from Wakefield to Aristodemo. I mean, it's textbook, and it all started with defense. It started with defense in the midfield for the Blast, as they denied Philadelphia, they denied Namaski the Blast yellow line, and then all of a sudden, the clear to Wakefield along the boards. Aristodemo is his runner on the left-hand side. Wakefield finds him. The team is unselfish. He'll settle for the assist and give Robbie the shot, and you'll see it here. Wakefield looking up at the midfield line, surveying the field, sees what he has to work with. Pappas had already committed. Easy left by Aristodemo. It's a 12-point lead. Eighth goal of the year for Aristodemo on a four-point night for the Canadian International. The two-point goal and two assists. Assisted by number 17, P.J. Wakefield. And it's Wakefield's second assist of the game as well. You know, Wakefield has resumed his offensiveness as a defender for the Blast. He's got 34 points now on the year, which is more than he had all of last year for Baltimore. And P.J. used to play offense. He was a midfielder when he first started with the Blast, but as unselfish as he is and now team captain, moved to the back when the Blast needed him. Here's Neto now on Kopp. Gets around Kopp again. Pappas with a kick save. That time, Kopp wins the battle. Yeah, played Neto well and smart along the boards and made the play. Donatelli looks to launch it long for Newsom. Nelson is there on his back. John Barry Newsom. Hooked it back out across the yellow line to Tony Donatelli. And check out last mission for tonight's third quarter stats brought to you by BG. He's going to recycle it. See, it's interesting. Philadelphia had a chance around the box with Newsom at the target, but on that possession at that time, they still were not able to get a shot off, and now a turnover here for the Blast. And Barton trips Lucio from behind. Jimmy Powell, Philadelphia's number 10, Casey Barton. 
Again, another foul on Philadelphia, and you just said it, Ken, from behind. Segu now with 11.45 to go in the game. Pierce drops it into the midfield. Nigel Marbles heads it here. Jonathan Steele has to battle Michelle Millwood for it. And Millwood gets tripped up. That's got to be yep, two minutes. They're going to send Donatelli off. An unfortunate position, but he looked like he may have thrown that hip out there, and he's not protesting as he is sent off. Second power play chance of the night for Baltimore. They scored on their first, and as we told you, they lead the league and are one of the best teams all time in power play percentage. 28 power play goals for the Blast, including one earlier tonight by Dennison Cabral, number 12. There's Casey Barton in the bench in his first game back with Philadelphia. He goes to the penalty box for two minutes here with the Blast already leading by 12. You know, the score, Philadelphia only has two points in this game. Blast already beat Philly 8-2 once this year. Segu had another game where he beat New Jersey 15-2. Wakefield rips that one. I think Pappas got a piece of it. Yeah, well met. Peter had to be alert on that. It'll be a corner kick now for the Blast. So the two-minute tripping penalty on Barton, not Donatelli at 332 of the fourth, has Philadelphia shorthanded for the second time tonight, and a set piece for Baltimore with 11.16 to go, and they lead it by 12. Millwood's shot is blocked by Tom Myers. Cabral, he scored the power play goal and leads the league with 12. And Wakefield with a shot off the glass, and that was cleared by Donatelli. And Neto threaded that one through three defenders to get it to P.J. A lot of great skill on display here. Brazilian Flair versus Philadelphia Grit. Right now, Flair's winning. Big time. Cabral again. Down in front, Wakefield has an easy goal. Wakefield from Neto. Big night for P.J. It's just too much for Philadelphia right now. Not only off the boards, I mean, that's a, that is a textbook indoor goal. Not only off the boards, but look at the pace with which Neto delivers it off the boards. First you see Cabral, now Neto, watch. He doesn't slam it. He hits it exactly the way it needs to be hit. Knew he had the runner coming in, it's P.J. Wakefield. And P.J.'s just had a tremendous year, both scoring and assisting. And the Blast lead it by 14. So in 24 games and 50 power plays now, Baltimore has scored on 29. That's 58%. They might get the, the league record of 62%. Set by Kansas City a few years ago when they had guys like Dino Delevsky, who's now in Monterey and lighting up the league. And, oh, yeah, oh, by the way, that year, the guy who led the league in power play goals is the guy who leads it now. Dennis and Cabral. Sagu pins that one against the boards. That time, Cabral was just peripherally involved in that. Neto gets the assist. Wakefield the goal, his ninth, 421. The time of the goal, we got 10 minutes left in the game, and it's 16 to 2. Cabral just missed the hat trick. It's going to be tough to pick a player of the game tonight, isn't it? <laughs> I think you may have to give it to the team. They're just relentless tonight, just pounding ball after ball at Peter Pappas. You know, Peters missed seven games this year. He had a concussion, then got dinged in the head when he came back. Hobacker did a pretty good job. But when your leading goalkeeper, and perhaps the best in the game today, misses seven games, that, that throws you off. And Nelson makes him pay. He read that one perfectly. The blast is Army Strong up 18-2. Back post for Billy Nelson, who contributes. And all of a sudden, you look at the defenders here for the blast tonight. Forget about the offensive players. Looking land, defender, a goal. Wakefield, defender, a goal. Nelson, defender, there you see him getting the hug from Raul Marcel, a goal. Here's the replay, Billy just gets it. Neto sets him up, cross field, how does that happen? Nelson just beats Steele, and then Nelson finishes. Yeah, Steele misplayed that one a bit. That's Nelson's third goal of the year. Donatelli. 
You know, Billy's a local product, grew up in Hartford County, which is just north of Baltimore, and then went to UMBC, the University of Maryland, Baltimore County. And look at this. Here's Millwood. Can he score? Papa sits on the ball. Now, I'm not sure he can do that. If he gets the ball outside the area, he can't touch it back inside, but we've got bigger things to worry about here as Namoski gets right in Millwood's face. Well, now Millwood and Pap is doing it, and you're right, Ken. I don't know if uh, if that's according to the rules. If it was in the box, yeah, but outside the box, he clearly was. Well, Millwood trying to keep his and extend his goal streak, which was six games coming in, and he looked like he had the perfect opportunity there, but Pappas stoned him. You know, you look at Millwood there, you look at his arms there for a moment. He's gotten a lot thicker over the years here in Baltimore. I remember when he came in, look at him right there. Yeah. He's got a big upper body now. He didn't have that when he started in the game. Yeah, he was a string bean. He's had some crab cakes, hasn't he? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. And they're good here. Well chiseled frame. Wakefield sent into the boards by D'Ambra. Donatelli now. Speaking of the crab cakes, that's probably a good thing to do after the game tonight. Thinking about it. Morris with the long left footer high and wide and up to the stage with 8.30 to go. So in the first five and a half minutes of the fourth quarter, the Blast have just stepped on Philadelphia's neck with a boot and not let up. Three goals, each one easier than the last. Extending a 12-2 lead to 18-2. We documented some of the Blast success this year, 15-2 over New Jersey. You'd have to go back a long way to find the last time the Blast beat somebody by 16 points. Their uh, season high output for points is 25 against Orlando on February 2nd. Steal with a left footer. Orlando having a tough year, but you know when you think about it, so is Philadelphia. Yeah, it's tough when you're the defending champions and you lose some key players. As you talked about, D'Ambra shoves Garcia from behind. Garcia, who's back on after his misconduct penalty late in the third. And it happened to the Blast last year. Oh, yeah. They were the champions 05-06 and were on their way to the playoffs 06-07 at 15-9. But they couldn't close and they lost six games in a row and out of the playoffs. Well, they're definitely not. If they play like this tonight, they're definitely going to be a team to beat. Oh, uh, they're a contender. They got to figure out a way, though, to beat Detroit. That's been the bane of their existence. They played Detroit eight times in two years and have lost seven of them. Newsom in traffic. Nelson on him. Sends it in front again. Segu is there. Halfway through the fourth quarter now. Blaster doing those uniforms proud tonight. Yeah, the folks in the U.S. Army have to be thrilled not only with the charitable cause for which they'll be auctioned off, but the way the men have played in them like a team, exactly the, the way they'd like to see it played, with contributions from everybody. Yeah, Philly just wants to get out of here tonight, but the Blast are just, they're buzzing around, even up by 16, contesting balls in the midfield. And it started raining this afternoon here in Baltimore. That, that trip back, if it's 90 miles or whatever it is, it's going to feel like it's going to feel like hours and hours of the rain getting back home to Philadelphia tonight. And probably in what will be silence on the bus. Yeah, I would imagine there will not be much, not be much talking. Sometimes it's your year and sometimes it isn't. Last year, clearly, it was for Philadelphia. But this year, they're on the verge of being knocked out. And what a blow tonight. Yeah, they'll only have four games left after this one. They'll have to win them all to get a chance to finish 500, which might get you in and might not. Steal with a three off the glass. Salenzo will track that one down, and if Philly doesn't get back, the Blast will have another chance. Wakefield again was turned into Mr. Offense here in the second half. Six minutes to go in the game. You know, you know, you look up on the scoreboard, you see 18 to two. How do you think New Jersey felt the other night in Monterey? They look up on the scoreboard in the first half and La Raza led it 20 to nothing on their way to a 28-12 victory over the Ironman. 
You know, when Monterey used to play in that little gym, you'd see scores like that quite a bit. Since the they moved to Arena Monterey, they've just got a bunch of guys who have figured out how to play the game. They got a great coach in Eric Geyer, and they are making a run late. They might be a contender. Well, they're the hottest team in the league. They've won seven games in a row, and they've scored 20 or more in four of those games. Well, only 529 remains in the fourth quarter here in Baltimore. The blast all over the kicks, 18 to 2. Gary Stein and I will be right back. You're watching the Major Indoor Soccer League Game of the Week exclusively on Fox Soccer Channel. P.J. Wakefield with his, a goal and two assists tonight. And Baltimore leads at 18-2. Coming back with a conclusion after this. There's a moment at night when all you want is fourth meal. Melty, crunchy, spicy, and grilled. How to order a Cuervo Black and Cola. Cuervo Black and Cola. No, nobody. With Cola. Jose Cuervo Black Medallion. Aged tequila with a smoother taste that's perfect with Cola. Baltimore will play four of their final six games on the road. They'll begin with that three-game swing there. California, Chicago, and Monterey. Tough places to play. The Cougars, that's a tough place to play in Stockton. Chicago can be tough, though Baltimore has had Chicago's number for the last couple of years. As for Philadelphia now, they've basically got to win out. And with New Jersey up and down, Milwaukee's going to be tough, Monterey tough. Oh, it, it doesn't look good for the kicks. No, it certainly doesn't, especially after this performance here tonight. And you're right. The Blast have some tough road games coming up. Anytime you go coast to coast, it's not easy. The Blast have not fared well in Monterey. They lost out there earlier this year. And California has also been a very difficult place for Baltimore to play. That set piece played over the, uh, over the wall there. It'll be another kick in. I think tonight, Ken, it's been all about desire for the Blast. They had a 12-day layoff from their last game. That Detroit game, the loss by 11, left a bitter taste in their mouth. They've had to answer questions all week about, hey, you were in this same position last year and you blew it. Why did that happen? Can it repeat? And they're sick and tired of that. And they came out here tonight and they decided, you know what, enough of that. We're going to the playoffs. We're making it happen tonight against Philadelphia. Certainly have played like a team possessed. Morris knocked that one long. Too long. Sagu here to Wakefield. Wakefield with a goal to assist tonight. One of many heroes. For the Baltimore Blast. And you know, all this without David Bascom in the lineup. And the Blast made a strategic change with him earlier in the year. They moved him from midfield to second forward with Michelle Millwood. And that combination clicked and helped the Blast win 8 out of 10. But now Bascom had his knee drained a couple of weeks ago and hasn't seen the field three straight games. Here's a chance. Garcia lofts it over Pappas and over the wall. And that started back at this end, Gary, with defense. You've got a team that's up by 16 points with four minutes to go, and they're still chasing every ball in the defensive end, winning balls and turning them into offense at the other end. That's the desire right there that the Blast have showed tonight, and they have just been merciless to Philadelphia. You almost feel bad for a guy like Peter Pappas. You know, if you're not a big indoor soccer fan, you're just tuning into the game for the first time, you take a look at Peter Pappas' performance and you say, man, that's just, yeah, that's just not good. But, I mean, this guy is one of the greatest ever, but just tonight, it's just too much blast. So there, Fox Football phone in coming your way here on Fox Soccer Channel. You can just do what I do and just stick it on Fox Soccer Channel and just rip the knob off your TV most of the year. No need for a new TV. Yep. John Barry Newsom was ever so hot coming into this game. We mentioned he'd been on a tear in his last eight games with 24 points, but he's been held without a goal tonight. He did assist on D'Ambra's goal, but highlights have been few and far between for the guys in white. It's not for lack of trying. He had a couple of nice bicycle kick tries in the first half, but couldn't convert. 
But yeah, the Blast have done a good job on John Barry Newsom. Sometimes it seemed like, you know, maybe those camouflage jerseys, they've blended in, because sometimes it seems like Baltimore's had six guys, six field players on the field tonight. They seem to have had the extra man. They've definitely had the extra step tonight. Yeah, I think the officials maybe a one time or another in the game may have missed one here or there. Because you're right, sometimes six, sometimes seven maybe on the field. They've certainly played like it. They have the element of surprise in those jerseys. Tom Meyer sends it here to Donatelli. Physical mismatch with Aristodemo, but coming in to help out for his first shift, Raul Marcel finally gets off the bench. Fresh legs for the blast with three minutes to go. Danny Kelly making sure he gets all the seniors in. <laughs> and again, up by 16 points, there's just no quit in the blast. Todd. Drew Kopp, his opposite member, comes up with that one. Mar Marcel, actually, an interesting story. He was one of the Brazilians acquired by the Blast in the offseason. The Blast made a pilgrimage down there. Danny Kelly went down with Dennison Cabral and a couple others and found four players that have contributed to the Blast's success this year, Seems including like Marcel and Lucio. Some of the very, very skilled players in this league have come from Brazil where they're used to playing futsal. And now we've got a blue card come out. And we're going to see somebody else sent off. I think it's on Johnny Steele in the midfield. Johnny now with seven minutes worth of penalties in this game tonight. Make it 12. Here's his second oh, yellow. Oh, there you go. See, and we talked about it. And that's that's the downfall of Johnny Steele. He just doesn't know when enough is enough emotionally. It led to his departure from Baltimore, and it's going to lead to his departure from this game. I mean, he's not going to come back. There's only 240 left to play. He'll be lucky if they let him take the bus back. Well, on a rainy night, I think they'll give in. The fiery young man from Northern Ireland. He's got all the ability in the world. There's no doubt about it. Had the seven goals and five assists coming into this game, but played his way out of Baltimore. Started with Kansas City. Oh, and there's uh, the red. Yep, he won't be joining us for the rest of tonight. Ah, uh, how about that? And I wonder if he's going to be a little lighter in the wallet, too. And he'll get his say in yeah, now. He's going to get his money's worth. So let's tally it up for Johnny Steele. Two yellows, a blue, and a red. I don't think there's anything left, if I'm not mistaken. No, he's got the cycle. He does. That's his third part of the game. He has to be ejected from tonight's game. Johnny Steele wanted to make an impression coming back to Baltimore. He did, but I don't think it was the one that most everybody wanted to see. And the only time you show up on the score sheet is for four penalty infractions, including two yellows, a red, and a tripping foul. And so what it means, and not, you know, with 2.40 to go and down by 16, I get it. Oh, well, look, look at that look, though. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's something. That's yeah. something that it means right there. But also what it means is now another player's got to go in the penalty box to serve his penalty. Yep. So now you're two players down. You want to sit as far away from Don Diemer on the bus as humanly possible. If they'll, if they'll let you ride underneath with the luggage, you do that. Especially if your name is Johnny Steele. Yeah. And now Baltimore, we told you, the best power play in the league, but they would be well served to uh, just hold the ball and run this one out and not make it any worse. That may be what they do. You know, Ken, I'm not sure if they do that. Well, it does appear that they will, but I think they got something in them tonight. We'll see. These two teams will not meet again this season. So if there's going to be any revenge to be had, it'll have to be next year. Neto, toe poke. How about that? Yep. Regis trying to dribble out of the back. Donatelli clears. It's held in by Wakefield. You know, we talk about the Blast prowess on the power play with 28. They also lead the league with five shorthanded goals in penalty killing situations. 45 ticks left for the man advantage. A minute 22 to go in the game. Neto again. That one got deflected by Regis. Yeah, both of those shots. I mean, Neto means it. The official call, by the way, on Johnny Steele. Two minutes for charging, five minutes for descent, and then the red card.
into the final minute. And Sagu tells Wakefield to just let this one roll. That'll kill the penalty. So Baltimore will finish two for three on the power play. And the final 40 seconds here will tick off with the ball just hanging around in Baltimore's end. I tell you what. Usually inside 10 seconds is when the game is over. I don't think I've ever seen it inside 55 seconds, and now Philly. Well, this game is over with. Uh, well, I hear you. Five and a half minutes gone in the fourth quarter. Well, the fans got their money's worth tonight. The blast is going to improve to 15 and nine, and the kicks will fall to 11 and 15. They got some work to do if they're going to make the playoffs. But here in Baltimore, they are. 11 and 2 now in First Mariner Arena. The final score Baltimore 18, Philadelphia 2. This late in the season, this could be the statement game for the Blast. There's still five games to go after tonight, actually six. They're 15 and 9. But, you know, you don't usually do this to Philadelphia. And the Blast have played well. They won 8 of 10 coming in. But this game tonight could be a statement to the rest of the league. When you talk about statements, we're going to have some questions now for P.J. Wakefield, who joins us after a terrific night. A goal, two assists, P.J., a, a, a total team effort for your guys here as we wait until P.J. gets all set. P.J., what an effort team-wise. Can you really pick a most valuable player of tonight's game, or does it belong to everybody? Uh, it was a total team effort. You know, everybody came out, and, uh, you know, everybody played. The defenders stepped up, scored some goals. The forwards did their stuff, checking back, playing defense, and, uh, you know, not one guy. Sagu made a lot of saves. He only gave up one goal, so uh, total team effort. P.J., I asked David at halftime how important that 12-day layoff was for you guys this late in the season. I mean, and I'll ask you the same question, but more importantly, I don't think I've seen you guys come out buzzing and with that desire it just seemed that you had tonight you guys were winning every single ball out there tonight well we knew this was a big game for us to uh try to get into the playoffs and uh you know we came out we had that week off so guys had their legs rested we got some guys back from injuries and uh it was good just a total team effort everybody had a lot of energy tonight bj gary mentioned this could be a statement game for you guys this is the time of year when you want to be playing your best what kind of statement did the blast make tonight well, I think we. Uh, I think everybody knows what we can do. Uh, I think everybody knows that we got up top. Neto, uh, Jules, and Denny can score the balls. We got a lot of guys that, uh, you know, we keep the ball in the net. We don't let teams score a lot of goals, and I think uh, that's a big part of our, uh, our team. And now you've got four out of your last six on the road. Talk about that challenge. Uh, it's definitely a challenge. You know, we're not the best team on the road. I think we got four wins this year on the road, and. Uh, you know, we gotta, we gotta play better on the road, get some road wins, and uh, we always play well at home, so uh, hopefully get some road wins that carries into the playoffs. All right, PJ, thanks. You guys did the Army jerseys proud tonight. Well yeah, done. Thank you. So the Blast get the big win tonight, and the key really was relentlessness, it seemed like. Uh, let's take a look at the highlights. Uh, from the get-go, uh, Sagu was a stalwart in the pipes, but really, they just started off the, the great tone, and they kept it up the rest of the game. Yeah, Neto started it off finding Pierce. There's looking land inside the box for goal number two. And there's your man, P.J. Wakefield. Very selfish, nice assist there to Denison Cabral. Aristodemo puts one towards goal here on the power play, setting up Denison Cabral on the back post there. The salute to the crowd upcoming. Philly now trailing 8 nothing. tries to climb back into the game. Don D'Ambra off a set piece makes it 8-2. to two. But here's the response from the blast. Inside, the shot by Lucio goes off the boards and off Pat Morris into the back of the net. Aristodemo from Wakefield makes it, what, 12 to 2 at that point. And then the onslaught was on. Another power play opportunity here. Cabral finding Neto through the box, off the boards, into the back of the net. I believe that's Wakefield. Billy Nelson winning a ball in front of Johnny Steele, depositing that one into the back of the net. And by the time you add it all up, glad handing all the way around the blast. Look at that, 39 to 16. That will not happen often against Philadelphia. Well, it did happen tonight, and so Baltimore wins the season series three games to one against their I-95 rivals. They get their 15th win of the year. They've all but clinched a spot in the postseason. They still need a little bit of help, but the way they're playing, anything is possible, including, yes, 
yet another championship banner to go in the rafters here if they play like they did tonight. Well, they've won three out of the last five, and Philly won it last year, and you mentioned it, uh, Ken, they got to go on the road. They've not been very well on the road, or they've not done very well on the road. They go to two tough places for them to play against two tough teams. California's never been easy for the Blast. Monterey hasn't been easy for anybody. So there's still a lot of soccer left to play. And let me tell you something, you get first or second in the league, you get a buy in the playoffs, another week of rest. Blast want that come April. Well, they're going to have to battle Milwaukee and Detroit for that one as we're down to the last few weeks of the MISL season. Well, we hope you've enjoyed tonight's coverage of the Major Indoor Soccer League Game of the Week here on Fox Soccer Channel. Gary Stein and I have enjoyed bringing it to you, and boy, Baltimore fans sure enjoyed it as they beat the kicks 18 to 2. Next Friday night, it's Orlando against Milwaukee at 8 o'clock Eastern. For Gary Stein, our producer director, Mike Sanamon, and our entire crew, this is Ken Tomash. Thanking you so much for watching. Thank you for watching all season long and wishing you good night from First Mariner Arena in Baltimore, Maryland, where the Blast beat up on the kicks by a final score of 18 to 2. Follow the MISL all the way through to the finals. We'll be back next week with more. Good night from Baltimore. Did you?